committee hearing on the committee on the labor and the human resources development is now called to order. We are here for the uh, continuation of uh, several uh, uh, Senate uh, bills and Senate resolutions. At this uh, juncture, let me first of all acknowledge our uh, senators present here today. Committee hearing uh, on the uh, order of on the labor and our, uh, human resources development is now from called uh, to order. Norte. We are here yeah, Senator for Ivy the uh, continuation of Senator uh, several uh, and our Morning, Chair. Chair herself, Senator Nancy Binay. Thank you, uh, ladies, for uh, being here. Parang walang representative bang mga kalalakihan. Kaya saludo tayo sa ating mga lady senators. Let me also recognize our our resource persons, our uh, guests this morning. Uh, let me start with uh, uh, Administrator Bernard Olalia uh, from uh, Philippine Overseas Employment Administration. Asek uh, Enrico Foss uh, from the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs. Uh, I think uh, Asek is in charge for uh, migrant affairs. We have Asek uh, Jesus Paes from DFA Office of the uh, Undersecretary for International Economic Affairs. We have Yusek uh, Yano from the Department of National Defense. Yusek Arnel Duco from the Department of uh, National Defense. From the private sector, we have, uh, wait, Yusek Joji Aragon is also here with us uh, to represent uh, Dole. I heard uh, Secretary Bellio is uh, in uh, uh, Davao last night. Uh, I think I saw him in uh, one of the photos. So I'm, I, I'm not sure if uh, Sec Bellio would be able to join us, but uh, Yusek Joji Aragon is here. We have uh, Administrator Hans Leo Kakdak of OWA, uh, who is very happy today because uh, Celtics swept the series against the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, Director uh, Eusebio Kadlum Boko of uh, Marina, uh, Director of Legal Service of uh, Marina. We also have with us from the private sector, um, from Joint Manning Group, Mr. Eric Marquez and Mr. Jose Cato from uh, Associated Marine Officers and Seafarers Union of the Philippines, Dr. Conrado Oka. We have uh, Attorney Dennis uh, Gorecho from uh, National Seafarers uh, Day Committee and uh, Director Elin Sana from Center for Migrant Advocacy. Uh, we also would like to recognize, uh, ayan na, uh, ang ating uh, magiting na Senador mula sa Davao, Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa. Thank you, Senator Bato, for joining us. At this juncture, let me uh, just give a short opening uh, statement. Muli, mapagpalang uh, araw po sa ating lahat. Uh, the legislative measures that we will discuss today are part of uh, our general approach to strike a delicate balance between combating the pandemic and restoring our economic activities. Again, we'd like to thank our dear colleagues for their unshakable commitment and desire to boost the morale of our workers and support our modern day heroes, our overseas Filipino workers. Uh, we have here today uh, Senate Bill Number 317 and Senate Bill Number 937 by Senator Grace Po, Senate Bill Number 801 and 300 by Senator Bong Revilla, together with uh, Senate Resolution Number 448. And then we have Senator Nancy Binay's uh, SBN 566, SBN 1369, and SRN 420. We have Senator Angaras, uh, Senate Bill Number 135, Senator Risa Ontiveros, Senate Bill Number 357, Senator Drillon's SRN 417, and Senator Dilimas 426. And for our part, we filed Senate Bill Number 1745, SRN 234, SRN 
3338, SRN384, and SRN397. Let me point out that many of the issues that we're currently facing are not urgent, not only urgent concerns, but also formidable life and death issues and uh, uh, concerns for the majority of our Kababayans, most especially our OFWs. We believe that uh, the bills and resolutions that form part of our agenda today are time-sensitive measures that will greatly impact the state of Filipino migrant workers across the globe. It is also clear to us that in the midst of the global crisis such as COVID-19 pandemic, our OFWs are uh, not spared and uh, they are in fact uh, one of the hardest hit sectors by COVID-19. Our OFWs were already vulnerable before COVID-19 and the pandemic has illustrated the fact that they are in a very precarious situation from the very start. The economic strain, prolonged isolation and quarantine, work stoppage, restricted level, panic, depression among others, exacerbate the vulnerabilities of our OFWs. Kapag nawalan po ng uh, trabaho ang isang OFW, minsan hindi lang isang pamilya o kundi magkakamag-anak ang nawawalan ng pagkukunan uh, dahil karamihan po sa kanila nakasandal sa kanilang kaanak na OFW. Malaking uh, problema po ito dahil kung susumahin halos kada pamilyang Pilipino ay may isa na miyembro na OFW. Base po sa resulta ng 2019 survey on overseas Filipino na Filipinos na inilabas ng PSA noong June 4, 2020, may 2.2 million OFWs ang nagtatrabaho sa ibang bansa. Sa pag-aaral naman ng Ateneo Manila University, tinatayang aabot sa 400,000 ang mga OFW na nawawalan na mawawalan ng trabaho o makakaranas ng salary cut dahil sa pag-shutdown ng mga pinagtatrabaho nilang kumpanya abroad. Nakapagtala naman po ang dole ng mahigit 600,000 na mga OFW na lumipat, uh, na lumapit, I mean, sa ahensya na humihingi ng assistance. As of August 19, also from dole, umabot po sa 394,044 ang mga displaced OFWs, 79,858 ang mga stranded at 152,000 naman, 946 ang mga repatriated. Wala na pong ibang panahon para maisabatas ang mga panukalang credit assistance at mga benepisyo at incentives para sa ating mga OFWs. Gayun din ang matagal ng kahilingan ng mga marinong Pilipino, ang Magna Carta of Filipino Seafarers. In uh, less than a week, bare months na po at maririnig na natin si uh, Jose Marichan, kanyang famous na awitin. It's usually the time of the year na masarap maging balikbayan. Pero hindi po ngayon na uh, taon. Kapag may Pilipino po kasi na umuwi ngayon, eh, posible po na nalay off po siya sa trabaho at walang katiyakan kung kailan muli siya makakabalik sa abroad. At hindi po tulad ng dati na masaya silang sinasalubong doon sa airport ng kanilang uh, mga mag kamag-anak. Ngayon, napakahaba po ng kanilang paghihintay bago makalabas ng mga quarantine facilities. Para po sa mga nakabalik na sa Pilipinas, sabi nga nila, swerte pa rin daw sila kumpara sa mga kababayan nating hanggang ngayon ay naghihintay pa rin ng repatriation, lalo na po yung mga wala ng makain at uh, matuluyan. Nakansela na yung mga resident permits nila, uh, overstaying o may mga matatanda at buntis na nangangailangan ng atensyong medikal. We understand the problems and sentiments of our OFWs. Gayun din po ang mga kababayan nating dumaranas ng matinding depression na epekto na rin uh, siguro ng napakataas na joblessness rate uh, dito sa ating bansa. Dagdag pa po ang hinaing ng mga health workers na apektado ng deployment ban. Yan din po ay gusto nating mapag-usapan. Ito po ang dahilan kung bakit hindi natin uh, masigmura ang pagdagsa ng mga illegal na dayuhan uh, manggagawa na nakikipagkumpetensya pa sa mga trabaho at oportunidad para sa ating mga kababayan. While we work for the welfare of W, especially the ones who are displaced by the pandemic, we also recognize that in the post-COVID-19 future, it is for the best interest of poor Filipinos that they should find enough employment opportunities at home that could sustain a stable and comfortable life for themselves and their families. 
Again, we hope that uh, through these measures that we will tackle today, time will come sooner than later when Filipinos will go and work abroad only because, only because it is their convenience and desire and not because it is a necessity for survival. Maraming salamat po. At this juncture, I will give the floor to our colleagues, uh, uh, Senator Aimi, Senator Lisa, Senator Nancy, Senator Bato, if you want to make an opening statement. Yes, Senator Lisa, you have the floor. Salamat, Chair. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Marahil narinig nyo na ang kasabihang kayod marino. Kapag marino kasi ginagawang umaga ang gabi, at gabi ang umaga. Walang pagod sa pagtatrabaho, nagsusumikap, nagtsatsaga sa kabila ng panganib sa dagat at lungkot na mawalay sa pamilya. Hindi matatawaran ang dedikasyon nila sa trabaho kaya hindi na nakapagtatakang karamihan sa mga seafarers sa buong mundo ay mga Pilipino. Hindi rin matatawanan ang matatawaran, hindi matatawaran ang kanilang kontribusyon sa ating ekonomiya. Mula 2010 ay umabot sa tatlo hanggang anim na bilyong dolyar ang kanilang remittance kada taon. Kung wala sila, wala rin ang shipping industry na nagdadala ng karamihan sa mga inaangkat na pagkain o produkto sa buong mundo. Wala rin mga entertainer, magagaling na cook, receptionists, bartenders, technicians, bellboys and girls sa mga cruise ships. Pero matindi ang dagok ng COVID-19 sa pagbabarko. Our seafarers are now more vulnerable to illegal termination, decreased or unpaid salaries, unsafe working conditions, and other forms of abuses. Maraming cruise ships ang hindi makapaglayag at mga barko hindi pa makadaong dahil sa COVID-19 pandemic. Aabot sa higit 40,000 sea-based overseas Filipinos ang umuwi na sa bansa at libo-libo pa ang nanganganib na mawala ng trabaho at inaasahang marirepatriate sa susunod na mga buwan. Isa sa malalaking hamon para sa umuwing marino ang kung ay kung paano sila patuloy na magiging provider sa kanilang mga pamilya lalo't hindi natin alam kung makakabalik pa sila sa barko o kung may babalikan pa bang industriya ng pagbabarko. Kaya dapat may nakalaang isang expanded reintegration program para sa kanila. May livelihood development, training programs at job placement services para sila ay may option sa kanilang bagong simula. Kabilang din ito sa aking panukala. Habang walang kasiguraduhan ang lahat, Tayo sa Senado sana ang magsigurado sa ating mga marino na may aasahan sila ngayong sila naman ang nangangailangan. The Magna Carta for Seafarers provides a comprehensive package of reforms to the legal framework regulating the maritime labor industry so the rights and welfare of seafarers are better protected before, during, and after deployment. It mandates comprehensive reintegration programs, free legal assistance, and other workplace protections for Filipino seafarers that will help them better cope with the COVID-19 pandemic. Through this proposed bill, government can better help the thousands of Filipino maritime workers whose livelihood was badly hit by the effects of the pandemic on global markets. Malaki na ang naitulong ng hanay mismo, ng hanay marino sa ating bansa. Pero ngayong panahon ng krisis, sila ang nangangailangan ng ating pagmamalasakit at pagsuporta. They deserve better protections as they deal with this difficult moment for the global maritime industry. I hope my fellow legislators can stand alongside our brave seafarers, led by our chair, and support the reforms in the maritime industry embodied in this proposed and similar act. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Much, uh, Senator Risa. I hope this time that uh, uh, we still have enough time to, to pass this measure to uh, we'll be able to do that. Thank you for that uh, meaningful uh, statement. We'd like to give the floor to any of our colleagues who would want to say something. Senator Aimee, Senator Bato. 
Yes, yeah, Senator Bato. Uh, Senator Aimee, if, if, if it's okay, Senator Bato will give the floor to ladies first, to Senator Aimee. I, I, I was simply going to say that Senator Nancy is around and she's an author. Yes, uh, I, I'm looking for her. Is, is she raising her hand? I guess I could, because I couldn't see her. She's not, uh, she doesn't have a video here. Senator Nancy. Senator Nancy, are you there? And Jan Kanina, bakit nawala? Oo. Yeah, we will we'll get back to Okay lang. Timing. Okay lang. I was just going to remind. Thank you. Go okay. ahead. We'll give the floor to Senator Bato, who is uh, very happy because uh, yeah. his uh, Toronto Raptors also swept the series against the <laughs> the Brooklyn Nets. We give the floor to okay. Senator Bato. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, also the Celtics of the Chairman also sweep the opponent. Well, Mr. Chairman, uh, wala pa kong uh, opening statement. I just would like to manifest before this committee na uh, I fully support uh, all the bills that are, that are being tackled by this committee this morning. At uh, kung saan ka, Mr. Chairman, doon ako. Decision being uh, my chairman. Uh, maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Bato, but we still have the bet against uh, the Raptor series and the Celtic series, which will start on Thursday. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, kidding aside, let's, uh, if, if uh, Senator Nancy is already there, Sige, we'll give the floor now to uh, the Department of uh, Labor and Employment to give uh, uh, their opening statement. I think uh, Asek uh, Joji, Yusek uh, Joji Aragon will uh, represent Dole. Uh, Yusek Joji, uh, you have the floor. Please proceed. Mute your uh, computer, ma'am. You're on mute, ma'am, so please unmute your computer. Sir, can you hear me now? Go Maraming ahead. Sir. Maraming salamat po, Chairman, Honorable Chairman Joel Villanueva. Ang minamahal po namin mga iba pong senador at, uh, senadora, uh, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Nancy Binay, and Senator Lisa Ontiveros. Mar magandang umaga ho. On behalf of Secretary Silvestre Bello, the, uh, we, we, he sends his apologies, by the way, for not being with you today. He really wanted to. But uh, he's right now in the bow meeting with the president. So allow me to read his opening statement. It's very, very short, actually half page. So the agenda today is quite important to the Dole. Number one, credit assistance for OFWs, especially in this time of COVID, is necessary. So we support all the bills that are uh, you know, with the theme of uh, credit assistance, we will provide our insights and our views today in the hope that we can strike a balance between making loan availment responsible, reasonable, um, and at the same time through, well, we, we will try to strike, strike a balance by having simplified requirements while ensuring that the safeguards for repayment can be assured so that we can sustain and continue funding for loans. We also suggest we inquire from OWA on what doable and realistic amount of loans can be established to enable more OFWs to avail of such facility. Number two, the Magna Carta for close to 400,000 Filipino seafarers prior to the pandemic is an important piece of legislation to provide our seafarers in both foreign flag vessels and domestic shipping adequate protection and labor standards. Eight years ago, walong taon na hong nakakalipas, ang Pilipinas ay nagratify ng Maritime Labor Convention 2006. It's supposed to be the Bill of Rights for all seafarers. At nakaka, uh, napapaloob ho dito ang mga standards like uh, Ilang, ilang oras silang magpapahinga sa isang araw, ilang beses silang magpapahinga sa isang buwan, ano ho ang wage or wages and salaries uh, that should be applicable to them. Yung sleeping quarters ho nila at yung proviso para sa pagkain, 
ay kailang, nakapaloob din sa MLC 2006. Uh, eight years ago, we thought yung progressive realization na pinag-uusapan ho natin was adequate enough to provide us uh, an upgrade no, in our uh, standards and uh, working conditions sa barko. So, ikiusap po kami ngayon ho sa 18th Congress, the Magna Carta for Seafarers will see enactment and uh, because napaka-importante ho nito sa, sa ating lahat, lalo na sa ating mga marino, as sinabi nga ni Senator Risa Ontiveros kanina, the dollar realizes that transport, yung uh, paggalaw nila ngayon at pagsakay, either ng cargo or ng pasahero, including maritime transport, is somehow constrained at this point no? because of the pandemic. Subalit, naniniwala din ho kami that our road to recovery or our path to recovery should include a plan, an institutionalized mechanism like a law, that will provide us again a competitive core of uh, seafarers ready for the opportunities of a global maritime industry and the learnings of technological advances and innovations in the maritime arena. So lastly po, yung mga kasamahan ko sa DOLE, which includes the leadership of OWA, POEA, ILAB, PLE, local employment kuyan, and the others, na palagay ko ay kasama natin ngayong umaga, will share our experiences and views on the other equally important resolutions concerning OFWs and uh, employment. So maraming maraming salamat po, Mr. Chairman, Senator Joel Villanueva. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Yusek Joji Aragon. And uh, it's also noted na first time naman na uh, Hindi natin nakasama si Sec Bellio, so we'll let it go. Salamat, uh, Yusek Joji. Sa ating uh, uh, mga additional guests na kasama po ngayon, we have the Assistant Secretary for Health Planning and Systems Development Team, Asek Kenneth Ronquillo. We also have with us uh, Chief Health Program Officer, Migrant Health Unit, Bureau of International Health Cooperation of DOH, Dr. Joel Buenaventura, and Mr. Arsenio Lingad, uh, OIC Deputy Administrator for Planning uh, ng uh, Marina. We give the floor uh, to uh, the Department of uh, Foreign Affairs. We have with us uh, Asik Enrico Foss. Uh, sir, would, would you like to... Uh, give your statement before we give the floor to our uh, colleagues for, for, for uh, questioning. Magandang umaga. Sir. At our dalagoso. At sa mga kasama po natin sa gobyerno at sa private sector. Uh, we at the DFA would like to thank the committee for inviting us to share our comments uh, on the agenda today, particularly for those bills that are being presented. Uh, let me just go to comments directly. On the provision of uh, credit assistance program for overseas Filipino, the DFA fully supports, in principle, the Senate bills and the provisions of great assistance uh, for OFWs as this proposed legislative measure help protect and promote the rights of Filipinos overseas, particularly on Senate Bill 317 on the establishment of credit assistance program. See it as a major uh, in the Middle East, for example. As you know, in the Middle East, uh, a precondition. Yes, Paul. Uh, yes, Paul. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, oh yeah. As a, it's, uh, for Senate Bill three one seven, for example, we're saying this as a, as a big help. No? As you know, in the Middle East, it is a precondition for the issuance of exit visa once a person is jailed for for loans or debts that he paid for the uh, the private loan. 
as we have been experienced, we could provide the person, the distressed person with uh, lawyers and pay for the lawyers, but we cannot uh, give uh, them the payment for the loans they have contracted. Maybe this could be addressed in the Senate bill. On the other two Senate bills, on Senate Bill 566 and 801, uh, there are only one thing that we wanted to include for now, uh, that is the inclusion of uh, undocumented OFWs in its coverage. Uh, not only uh, we think that uh, undocumented OFWs would also benefit for this uh, measure uh, if they are included in the coverage. On the institutionalization of Mania Carta for Filipino sectors, just like Dole, we applaud the continuing discussion and hopefully the approval of these bills. Uh, particularly, we wanted uh, to uh, suggest the following. One, uh, the inclusion of uh, in its coverage the direct hires. Uh, so it includes everything if there are still direct cars in the seafaring industry. Second, on the uh, provisions on repatriation, we know that it does not have pro provide standards for ascertaining whether the termination of employment is due to the fault of the seafarer. It, does it is thus recommended for such standards to be provided in order to better protect the rights of the Filipino seafarer. The third is that uh, uh, we wish to uh, to suggest that it should cover emergency repatriation for medical emergencies. Uh, fourth, we also would wish to uh, suggest that uh, the type of financial assistance and material support that could be provided to the seafarer could be uh, uh, included. Uh, for example, in the case of that, the cost of shipment of remains or the cremains as well as your personal being, is suggested to be included. Lastly, uh, the committee may wish to consider to include provisions on compassionate visits of immediate family members as far as practical in cases of sickness of seafarers abroad. Um, on Senate Bill 937, uh, one thing I we wanted to uh, to suggest is that the consistent use of the term seafarers uh, and avoid using the term seamen, this is to help promote the use of gender neutral terms. Both, as we know, both women and men can and are working abroad in ships engaged in different times of uh, productive work. Uh, lastly, on the issue on the, uh, the other agenda on the COVID-19 uh, response, uh, we will just uh, respond to some questions that uh, we expect uh, to be uh, to be given later on in the meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Yusek uh, Enrico Foss. Uh, your, your, uh, that's very helpful uh, input, sir. And uh, I think uh, I just want to say uh, one thing about the importance of uh, legal assistance. We uh, approved, the Senate approved the bill, uh, and Senator Bato and I are, are very uh, passionate about this. We were able to approve the uh, bill expanding the use of uh, legal assistance fund to ensure that uh, uh, distressed OFWs are given immediate assistance at all levels of, of uh, proceedings. And uh, we thank, again, Senator Bato, Senator Marcos, Senator Antivera, Senator Binay, who all uh, voted and uh, pushed for this measure. At this juncture, let's uh, uh, give the floor to our colleagues. And uh, we'll start with uh, Senator Aimee Marcos. Uh, Senator Marcos, you recognize? Yes, thank you very much, um, uh, Chair Joel. And uh, um, since we have so much on the agenda, paano ba tayo mag-umpisa? Um, uh, start muna tayo dun sa credit assistance. So, pwede, uh, ano ma'am, uh, pwedeng... Uh, wide range. Uh, wide, oh, wide, wide range of ano yan. Pwede. Sige. 
Okay. Sige. Um, yung umpisa lang ako sa credit assistance ano kasi meron ako na obserbahan. Unang-una dito sa Ilocos tinatanong ko ano yung sarili akong survey dito na yung 50,000 daw hindi na magkakasya talaga. So alam ko na pinagpipilitan lang natin tumulong at laging problema ng dole ay kakulangan ng budget. Pero parang dapat yata 100,000 sa totoong buhay at saka Uh, kasi itong mga costing na to, wala pa yung iniiwan nila ng pangkaraniwan na too much na gastos ng kanilang pamilya, just to be sure. Parang kung kaya natin 100,000, kahit suntok sa buwan, pwede ba 100,000 na tayo? Um, isa pa, yung credit assistance, in a way, medyo nakakalito siya. Mas okay ba sabihin pre-departure loan? Kasi hindi naman siya pan, pa, uh, malawak na credit assistance, kundi pre-departure loan. Bago pa sila ma-deploy, ibibigay na yung pera. Kasi kung tutuusin, bawal kasi yung magpautang sa OFW kung uh, alamin ninyo, di ba? Pinapa, pinapautang natin yung pamilya nila, pero hindi sila. Kasi sa pakiwari ng banko, wala naman sila rito. So sabihin na natin pre-departure loan or at least i-insert natin sa definition. Uh, ikatlo, may katanungan ako doon sa uh, relasyon nito sa tinatawag na bagong lunsad na Overseas Filipino Bank. Ang totoo, nung uh, tinatag yung uh, OWA uh, in 1976, it was very clear to my father that this was OFW welfare. Um, given that uh, this is a pre-assistance loan, perhaps a bank, Uh, the OFB, newly launched under the uh, land bank, is better able to uh, administer and secure the funds. Kasi parati tayo natatakot sa OWA, alam naman natin na nung panahon ng uh, 2004-2005, ginamit yung 530 million pesos mula sa OWA, linipat bigla sa PhilHealth, at laking taka na lamang ng OFW kung paano gagamitin yung PhilHealth ID card sa ibang bansa. Kaya sana hindi na maulit ito mga pangyayari ito. Kaya ta, siguro uh, tulungan na lang natin yung land bank o itong bagong overseas Filipino bank. Depende sa opinion ng ating chairman. Um, meron din akong comment sa OFW businesses. Ang Nakita namin sa mahabang karanasan tungkol sa mga nagtatrabaho abroad, alam mo? Kasi Ilocos Norte, 1906 pa lamang, nag -e export na po kami sa Hawaii. Nauna kami magpadala ng tao sa Hawaiian fruit at sa iba pang lugar sa Hawaii. At dahil dito, nakita natin na pag nagsiuwi ang mga trabahador, na dedengoy sila na na nadadali sila sa mga iba't ibang investment schemes na uubos tuloy yung savings nila. In other words, not every single OFW is really ready to become an entrepreneur, to be self-employed. So, I was thinking na in addition to the OFW owned businesses, is there a way for us to help them? for a transition or a shift to local employment alternatives or perhaps co-investments or perhaps uh, partnerships, perhaps a directory of local partners who are ready um, to expand, for example, or to uh, veer into e-businesses and uh, would like OFW partners. Um, I think we need to make the... Uh, transition and repatriation phase uh, gentler, steadier, and better regulated because we have seen too many tragic stories of hardworking OFWs squirreling away funds for years upon years and suddenly just blowing it all on a uh, bad investment decision by unfortunately their friends, their relatives, and so on. So, yun lang po. Huwag nating iisipin na ang bawat OFW ay handang-handa na magnegosyo kasi hindi siya katotohanan. Thank you. Yun lang po. Thank you, uh, Thank you. Senator Amy Marcos. That's uh, a handful of uh, questions and uh, insightful uh, comments. We'd like to uh, ask Dole and uh, perhaps uh, Owa, I'm, I'm sure, would, would like to... Uh, 
uh, make some comments considering that uh, they are also in charge of uh, establishing loan facilities, if I'm not mistaken. Let's give the floor now to uh, Asik Joji Aragon. Sir, Chairman, maraming salamat po. Sir, sir, can you hear me? You. You're, 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 you're muted, ma'am. Yeah, okay. there you go. Yes, we can hear you. Please oh, proceed. Salamat, Chairman. And to the good senator, distinguished senator, Aimee Marcos, salamat po. Napakaganda mo nung sinabi niyong pre-departure loan. So we, can, we could distinguish that itong loan na ito will be uh, utilized for the pre-departure expenses. No? Uh, for the OFW prior to his departure. So maganda hong idea yan and uh, we'll take that in very, very seriously. Ngayon po yung sinabi nyo rin na hindi lahat ng mga uh, OFW cut out for entrepreneurship, uh, for small business uh, startup, totoo po yan. I think that's an observation shared by the DOLE, the OWA, and the other units under the DOLE. That's the reason why we are doing financial literacy. But allow me to, I don't know if um, Administrator Hans Kapdak is already in. I haven't seen his framework. He's here, he's here. Yes, he's here. Uh, so they are on the ground. And therefore, I will kindly uh, request uh, Administrator Hans Kapdak to kindly uh, elaborate on the 100,000 uh, proposal from the good. Senator Andy Marcos, kasi medyo nga maliit po, given the state of affairs now, yung 50 mil or 50,000. Sir, Hans Kakdak, kindly. You give the floor to Administrator Hans Kakdak, who is uh, blooming glo uh, today, blooming today <laughs> because of uh, Celtics, the Celtics uh, victory. And uh, uh, Admin Hans, uh, in addition to the questions and the comments uh, made by uh, Senator Marcos, may we also be a price of the, I, I remember um, uh, OWA getting additional 5 billion uh, uh, pesos uh, funds for, 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 for repatriation. Siguro, let, let's, let's, let's have an update later. Sige po, uh, Admin Hans, you have the... Yes, yes. Uh, salamat, uh, uh, Chair Sen, Sen Aimi. Salamat po sa tanong. Yes, very relevant po yung amount. Uh, uh, sa ngayon, Sen, halimbawa, uh, meron tayong uh, uh, repatriation grant, uh, micro startups for distressed workers, 20,000 pesos. Nag-increase na yan sa lagay na yan po, Sen, from 10 to 20 during the Duterte administration. But uh, yun nga, uh, pag kami nasa House o nasa Senate hearings, ay talagang uh, kahit yung 50 mil, uh, hindi pa rin, 25, 50,000, hindi pa rin ho talaga kasya. Pero um, nakikita namin ang pag-asa dun sa proposal na 50, let's say even 100,000 Sen. Uh, mamili kung mamimili po tayo halimbawa uh, every year meron tayong business plan competition uh, sa sea-based sector uh, meron hong nagwawagi dito na mga about 20 winners nationwide uh, kung kung pwede ho nating simulan yung 100,000 uh, but uh, we can uh, uh, run a contest or or should I say, uh, I don't know if contest is the right term given the crisis, no? Uh, but uh, perhaps a a, uh, a program uh, where we will invite OFWs to come up with the best business plans and we will choose. Uh, so kung 100,000 po yan, uh, pipili tayo ng siguro kahit uh, 10,000 uh, dun sa 100,000 para ma-address naman din yung issue ng sustainability. Kasi ang big worry dito, Sen, Kung taasan natin ng 100,000, uh, ang nakikita natin potentially uh, mga 100,000 to 200,000 ang mag apply uh, And uh, we, we really want to uh, level expectations, uh, so to speak, uh, to make sure na yes, meron tayong programa pang livelihood na 100,000, pero uh, hindi ito para sa lahat kasi baka maraming ma-disappoint at sabihin na-deny naman yung aming uh, application. Uh, dun sa point ng OF Bank, uh, sa ngayon po, 
prior to the COVID crisis, we were working on a, a, a collateral free loan uh, program with them. Pero it fell through because nga merong COVID crisis tayo ngayon. And uh, sa ngayon, uh, we, we are, uh, uh, should I say, just being careful uh, about uh, entering into an arrangement with the OF Bank, uh, considering it, it's, it is relatively uh, new uh, in the banking sector. Uh, maybe Land Bank is a possibility, uh, Sen. Meron tayong existing program, yung Enterprise Development Loan Program, as Sen I mean, very well knows, no? the, the marami rin nag-avail nito sa Region 1, sa Ilocos Norte. So, uh, we we are looking at perhaps enhancing or improving the EDLP uh, with Land Bank. It's a partnership loan program with Land Bank, lalo na sa aspeto ng collateral. Uh, kasi ngayon, uh, marami na nagsasuggest na perhaps yung, yung uh, de deposit nila sa banko, uh, however it, it may be, uh, how much it may be, ay pwedeng gawing collateral instead of real estate or whatever uh, forms of collateral na very stringent. Uh, so yun lang po muna, yun ang masasabi ko. And let me just add while I'm, I have the floor, na three weeks ago nag-approve ang OWA board chaired by Sec Bello ng group livelihood. It's a 500 million uh, facility. It's a grant, 150,000 to 1 million ang uh, maiga-grant mai natin. Uh, it's a group livelihood program and we're set to roll this out in September. Yun po. Ay, uh, Mr. Chair, magtatanong lang. Uh, Senator Aimee, you can record. Yes, Mr. Chair, kasi ang pagkaintindi ko doon sa OF Bank, um, yun yung post bank dati, di ba? Tapos uh, magiging subsidiary ng land bank. Parang savings bank siya ng land bank. So, uh, yun lang, iniisip ko lang whether within the dole confines, uh, given the postponement due to COVID, eh, kinakailangan yata uh, moving forward, isipin lang natin kung paano sila mag-aalay. Kasi, syempre, ayaw natin napakaraming uh, ahensya, pare-parehong ginagawa, tapos nagtuturoan sa bandang huli pag bulilyaso, no? So, pangit yun. The other thing, uh, in as much as admin hands, uh, you're on the ground, ika nga, sabi nga ni Yusek Choji, um, meron ba tayong ibang tulong sa ating OFW, maliban sa startup, maliban sa entrepreneur, yung local employment lang muna, yung stages, can we diversify that portfolio for uh, repatriation? Can we diversify it so that may available local employment, alimbawa, co-investment or uh, partnership, makikisosyo lang sila sa mga handang uh, magtrabaho. And uh, saka na yung... Uh, uh, enterprise na mismong self-employed. Kasi lagi kaming kinakabahan dyan sa Ilocos. Uh, hindi naman very entrepreneurial yung Ilocano, very, very conservative. Eh, natatakot talaga. Tapos ang lit-lit pa, kakarampot pa yung pera, 20,000. Yung ipon pa nila, mawawala pag hindi marunong eh. Sana magbigay rin tayo ng mga alternative uh, livelihood o oh, employment. Sabihin na natin, employment. Tapos makikisosyo. Yung iba-ibang uh, mas uh, conservative, ika nga. Please, please. Yes, that, that's well taken, Sen. Uh, we can talk to OF Bank again and explore possibilities. Uh, dun sa employment aspect, perhaps uh, Dole may have something to say about this, but we're trying to hook up and, and revive yung mga online portals, uh, yung mga job employment facilitation portals ng Dole and even POEA uh, para malaman ng kababayan natin kung ano ang available uh, job opportunities uh, mapasilitate locally and and overseas. Uh, dun sa investments, Sen, uh, we're willing, we're open to to venture into this kind of area. But uh, I have to admit, in the past, medyo careful tayo, uh, kasi natatakot tayo kapag nagfail yung investments, Sen, whether big or small, uh, sisisihin tayo ng worker. Uh, but but what we're doing right now is no, we're. Pero sila we're... naman ang pipili. Parang, ewan ko, kung makakreate tayo ng program, makisosyo tayo sa malaking kumpanya na nag -e expand talaga or naghahanap ng franchise. Favorite naman ng OFW, Prangtisa. So, okay, I don't know, makisosyo sa more experienced person. Yes, Sen. 
Then, well, what mentoring, you... Parang mentoring program na ginagawa ng private sector or something like that. Kasi time and again, itong uh, OFW enter enterprises have failed uh, and are really, really difficult to start up. Nakakaawa po sila. Yes, and uh, what we can do along those lines, which we are doing now, is uh, reach out to DTI uh, about uh, yung mga possible enterprises or, or mm -hmm. partners. Uh, na pwede nilang pasukan. And then, Sen, meron din tayong existing effort ngayon with the SEC. Uh, yun namang SEC uh, can give us advice or at least yung mga tips sa mga OFWs kung ano yung iiwasan nilang mga or papatulan nila ng mga investment uh, proposals or, or arrangements. Uh, so, along those two lines, DTI... Ako suggest ko, mag-lease mag, mag, mag rin ng dole sa DA Kasi the opportunities in agriculture are tremendous. Yeah. At sabihin na natin ang totoo, ang karamihan ng OFW nang galing sa rural, remote areas at ang alam lamang ay magsaka. Kaya babalik at babalak sila sa pagsasaka. Ano naman ang kikitain doon? Kaya kung sana uh, mag-interface na tayo, ano ba yung mga profitable jobs or uh, at least man lang mga areas ng uh, agriculture na pwedeng pasukan? Yes, and yes, we will do sir. that. We already have uh, talks with uh, uh, DA, uh, especially uh, as a Christine Bautista. We've been working on uh, uh, programs with them, so we will report uh, in due time. Kapag uh, na finalized po yung ating programa, pwedeng i roll out with DTI, DA, uh, and on, on the investment uh, fraud uh, area uh, with the SEC. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Admin Hans. No, kanina pa pinag-uusapan and uh, when, when Senator I made mention about the 50,000 ang nakulang talaga yun. Uh, can, can, can we get a commitment from, from Dole or from OWA na we can expand their uh, loan programs? Kasi since OWA, I believe, is already authorized under its charter to uh, extend loans to uh, OFW members, can we do that? Uh, I, I know, uh, mas maganda may batas and we'll, we'll work on it. Baka pwedeng makahingi ng uh, some sort of commitment kasi parang when I was listening to Senator Aimee, mean, parang oo nga, lahat tayo alam natin na kulang but then parang hindi natin magawa. Can, can we do that now? Can we expand their uh, loan programs? Yes, and uh, of course we have a board so I will say yes, we will form yeah. up our proposal uh, to Please. our chair, Tech Bello, and to, to our board. Uh, in the meantime, what I can uh, report this morning is yung group livelihood, 150,000 to 1 million okay. peso okay. grant window uh, that the board approved uh, three weeks ago. We will roll this out in September. Po. Okay, that's okay. good news. But uh, we, we will be very happy kung uh, ma-bring up din po ito. Again, this is a loan. Hindi naman to ibinibigay, no? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair, kaya binanggit ko yung uh, yung land bank, yung oil bank, kaya ako binanggit kasi may maitim akong balak na sana ibigay sa OFW yung uh, land bank money. Sa laki-laki ng binigay natin eh. 'Di ba? May 50 plus billion na naman silang karagdagan pati yung DBP. Eh sana may window naman para sa OFW na magagawa ng hindi maitim na balak yun, Senator Aimee. <laughs> yes, uh, Sen, can we just reassure Sen Aimee that uh, there are ongoing talks with Land Bank and uh, we plan to improve the already existing program. So, maganda pong balak yun, ma. Maganda po. Mr. Chair. Sige, thank you. Uh, let's recognize Senator Nancy Bina uh, is also uh, an Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, since sa pag-uusapan na naman yung patukoy sa livelihood, may datos ba ang dole or uwa dun sa mga na nabigyan niya na ng 20,000 or 10,000? yung success rate ng ating mga OFW pagdating dun sa pagpasok sa negosyo? Question. Sige, o Asik Georgie or uh, Admin Han, sige po. Opo, wala, wala po kaming uh, uh, firm data on the success rate. Uh, what we have is yung first three months uh, na kung kailan sila pinagbigyan, medyo mataas pa yon mga 70%. Na, na talagang kinumit nila into investing yung 20,000. But uh, I, I, I will also admit na hindi tayo sigurado uh, whether or not nag-prosper yung negosyo na yun. We do have success stories. Uh, we do identify yung success stories and give them uh, recognition. 
but we don't have the full pledged data, the complete data as to yung success rate po natin. Medyo na mabahala ako na wala tayong datos pagdating dun sa uh, parang success rate ng mga livelihood programs na uh, ini-implement natin. Siguro baka magandang pag-aralan or magandang uh, bigyan ng pondo para makita talaga natin kung nagiging sulit ba itong pagbibigay ng ganitong klaseng pondo. Kasi di ba... Uh, Kasi kung walang ganong pag-aaral, parang nagtatapon lang tayo ng 10,000 or 20,000 dun sa mga binibigyan natin. At walang, walang parang lumalabas ngayon, walang follow-through pagdating dun sa mga livelihood programs natin. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Nancy. No, just to follow up itong uh, uh, reintegration program. One, I think it's important to note na binanggit Senator Amy, Senator Nancy, na hindi lahat ng OFWs are cut off to uh, become uh, entrepreneurs or successful entrepreneurs. But we have to give them options. No, Ang isang mahalagang question na gusto kong i-raise, yung uh, 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 Yusek Joji, considering that... Uh, uh, we have repatriated, I think, more than 150,000 OFW since the start of uh, the pandemic. Am I correct? Uh, meron po ba tayong uh, uh, accounting of the available skills, uh, uh, yung, yung, yung skills stock in the uh, country, uh, yung profile ng ating mga OFWs, ano yung makakayahan nila, ano yung uh, skills nila. Mer meron na po ba tayo yun? Yes. Sir, can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Yes, yes. Marami pong salamat. Yes, sir, we are seriously um, in the process of uh, improving our database and also doing a profiling that would indicate the skills and competencies of our repatriated uh, overseas but, Philippine workers. Kaya ho namin ito ginagawa dahil ang gusto ko natin, yung mga umuuwi, even ba bago pa lang sila umuwi, ay ma-match na namin sa opportunities naman ho na nandito sa Maynila o sa mga kanya-kanyang probinsya. For example, Mr. Chair, ito hong BPO industry, yung business process outsourcing. Uh, sinabihan na ho kami in a meeting the other day na nangangailangan sila ng ganito, yung sinabi ho listahan na mahusay exhaustive list of OFWs together with where they are and what are the skills and competencies. Dahil gusto din dala hong tumulong ang private sector na magmatch kami. So that sila naman ho, given the fact that these OFWs have foreign training, they have also honed their skills and competencies, let's say, in a place like Dubai or in a place like Singapore or South Korea, ay mamamatch naman ho yung mga kanilang client servicing skills, for example, or yung pakikipag-usap, client relations, and BPO skills. Doon sa nangangailangan naman po dito. As you can see, according to the president, uh, Mr. Ray Untal, upswing din naman ho, mga 90% na ay nakaagapay na o nakarecover na ang 90 to 95% ang BPO. So, ito ho, this is one of the bright spots that we have located together with local employment and, of course, led by Secretary Silvestre Bello. So, yes, indeed, in answer to your query, the database and the profiled uh, OFWs is in our list now and we're ready to share it with uh, appropriate sectors and industries. Sir? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Yusuf Georgie. I think it's very important because uh, the only way that the uh, uh, reintegration uh, program of the government will uh, succeed is having that uh, inventory, you know, that list, that profile. Um, ang next question is, is there a difference between uh, the reintegration programs of the department during this time of pandemic from the, the integration programs in the past? Because I think if there's no difference, we have we have to differentiate, no? especially now na, 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 na nasa gitna tayo ng uh, isang pandemia. And then another question is, Yung reintegration na program ba natin ay uh, ino-offer natin kahit na ikaw ay uh, undocumented uh, uh, worker o pang-documented uh, workers lang ito. So, I just wanted to, to note, uh, Yusek Joji. 
Yes, sir. Sir, can you hear me again, please? Marami pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Sir, in answer to your query, number one, yes, indeed, uh, kailangan hong mag-shift at uh, ito ho ang instruction ni Secretary Bello sa amin between, prior to the pandemic and now the complexion and the texture of reintegration program in the Philippines under the DOLE has greatly shifted. Now there is a mas acute ho kasi ngayon, mas sensitibo at mas may sense of urgency ngayon. So yung sinabi ho ni Senadora Amy Marco kanina, yung mas doable, mas realistic, mas may handholding at may, may, mas may mentorship relative to reintegration ay ginagawa po uh, ng isang opisina led by one office called uh, NRC or National Reintegration Program under the OWA at uh, ito ho eh tinutulungan ho din namin ano uh, tulong-tulong ho kami lahat para ma-match agad at maibigay yung tinatawag na reintegration services sa mga nangangailangan yung mga pauwi pa lang dito at umuwi na sa iba-ibang mga probinsya o rehiyon that's number one. at ang gusto rin po namin sabihin ay uh, kailangan for example sir wala nang home distinction actually ngayon eh between documented or and undocumented kami ho ay nagtutulungan under the one country team approach with the DFA with the DTI with the Department of Agriculture and other relevant uh, departments kung paano ho mapapaigting ito tama ho si Senator Marcos kanina for example sir uh, ano ho bang oportunidad sa agrikultura o oh, eh adyan naman ho ang ating mga regional offices na agad-agad ay makakapagbigay ng ayuda relative to reintegration so uh, nangangako ko kami and this is our commitment to you and our assurance that nag-iba na ho nag-shift na tayo to more doable siguro hindi naman uh, I, I don't I don't like to say long term no because these are short term and medium term intervention so that makalabas mo tayo dito sa pandemya na ito closer to recovery and rebound so those are the answers to your question yes. sir yes you said georgie thank you very much so that's very enlightening however we look at the budget of nrco uh itong national reintegration uh, uh, center okay. office and uh, we asked them in fact uh, we asked them about about their budget and uh, how we could be of help. Now, NCRC COO's uh, NRCO's budget for its uh, programs for undocumented OFWs is twenty nine million eight hundred seventy two thousand five hundred. As of June twenty two, June twenty two, po you say, Georgie, they have yet to disburse any funds for its programs. So let me uh, call the attention of uh, our uh, DOLE office on this. I wanted to find out bakit ganito. As of June 22, hindi pa nakapag-disburse ng uh, anumang pondo mula po dito sa programa. Can we be uh, 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 clarified about this? Opo. Marami pong salamat, Mr. Chairman, distinguished senator. Uh, palagay ko ho... Uh, I will. We will look into it. No, we will look into this. But relative to the ECQ and then the ECQ and then the PCQ, when the movement and mobility of our people and even yung ating mga telecom constraints are quite impaired. Palagay ko ho hindi sila masyadong nakagalaw. But let me inform you that the the imminent uh, bayanihan to recover us. One act na niratipikahan na ho ng both uh, the Senate and the lower house. We look forward to it because what we intend to do, given the power to realign also, is ensure that the constrained budget under the... Ito yung sinabi niyo po na, did you say 29 million, uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, 29 million 872. Uh, Sige, Yusek, uh, hintayin na lang namin yung uh, sagot. Kasi this is different from Bayanihan 1 and 2. No? It's a, a different uh, uh, budget because this is under the General Appropriations Act. So we just want, uh, and, and perhaps this is a good way to convey the message sa buong department that we are uh, monitoring their uh, performance. 
So hopefully we'll we'll get a, a, an answer about this, especially at this point in time where uh, all of our uh, OFWs are are, are are in need of help. Anyway, we'll we'll give the floor to uh, our colleague. Uh, Senator Risa, Senator Risa is raising her, her hand kanina. Yes, Senator Risa, you have the, you're recognized, ma'am. Salamat, Chair. Chair, bago po yung mga tanong ko, kung mamarapati ng Chair, kanina meron yata gustong idagdag si Ellen Sana ng CMA tungkol po sa diskusyon sa OFWs and entrepreneurship. Sige po. Uh, Salamat, Chair. Executive Director, yan, Ellen Sana. Ma'am, you're recognized. Thank you, Chair. Uh, para makapag-contribute lang po doon sa credit assistance uh, bills na rin. Ma'am, ma ma'am, you're... Malala po natin you're, yung RPA 8042, Section 29, 21. Mute mm -hmm. po ako. Uh, uh, can you, ano, uh, Admin Hans, pwedeng paki-mute lang muna. Uh, sige po. Uh, Hello? Ma'am Ellen? Chair, pwede na? Yes, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, thank you, Chair. So just to contribute on the deliberation on the credit assistance bills, maalala po natin, Chair, dun sa Section 21 ng RA 8042, meron po dun Migrant Workers Loan Guaranteed Fund para precisely yung sabi ni Sen uh, Marcos ni Sen Aimee, pre-departure loan and family assistance loan. Ito po, ang magbibigay po ng guaranteed fund ay ang OWA, 100 million pesos, at ang magpa-participate po for granting the loans are government financial institutions. Unfortunately, the program was stopped, and I think and you can verify this with OWA kasi po hindi nakakapagbayad yung mga OFWs na naglo-loan, kaya yung guaranteed fund ng OWA yung ibinabayad. So what happens next was, Inilipat po ang 3 billion each, at least initially to my knowledge, to the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Development Bank of the Philippines kasi sila yung may expertise sa usapin ng mga pautang at siguro pati yung pangungulekta ng, ng bayad sa utang. So baka maganda rin makakuha ng feedback kung paano nag-perform yung Land Bank at saka DBP sa pagpapautang sa ating OFWs. 2010, when we had the Republic Act RA 100 uh, 2010 meron na po yun, pero meron tayo doong prohibition sa in relation to uh, interest rates. So pwede pong mangutang ang OFW kahit kanino, including the private sector, but they put a ceiling kung magkano yung pwede mong i-charge na interest rate, which is 8%. So prohibited act po yun pag ang collection ay mas malaki sa 8%. Ang problema doon, siyempre yung, yung burden of proof na ginamit ng worker talaga yon in relation sa pag-a-abroad niya, doon natatalo yung worker. So may, may wala kang ceiling but de, sa utang, pero meron kang ceiling sa interest rate, pwede ka sa private sector. Ngayon po, ang, 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 um, ang isa pa pong in relation to that, I think yung question din ng Sa, lalo na sa panahon ng COVID, how successful are we in granting that 10,000 or 20,000? Maganda po talaga yun. Kasi baka kailangan, katulad ng sinabi ni Sen Aimee, baka kung magbibigay ka, lakihan mo para mas meron kang rate, mas mataas yung rate ng success mo. Pero dapat, syempre, sisinupin mong mabuti na talagang maayos yung proposal. So I think, uh, una, ugnay, and definitely we agree with Sen Aimee as well, Na especially in these times, kailangan, lalo na for repatriated migrants, kailangan ang kanilang mundo in terms of GOs assisting them, mag -e expand na. Hindi na lang yan OWA, POEA, and RCO. But it should include, especially from the rural areas, definitely ma'am, DA, DOST, DTI, pati po CHED, yung mga universities in the provinces can partner with our NRCO and DOLE sa pagkikreate ng mga job opportunities and training, product development, etc. And I think, bago pa lang nagsisimula yung ating mga OFWs, even the repatriated, na mas marami pang opportunities, kaya dapat lalawakan din nila yung kanilang mundo in terms of government agencies who can really assist them, especially in reintegration for reintegration purposes. At siguro po, yun lang uh, comment on the actual proposed bills on the credit assistance and na ina sa OWA, baka din magandang i-consider, of course, this is not my, it's not si Admin Hans, 
wala pong kita masyado ang OWA ngayong 2020 kasi wala tayo halos deployment. Pero at the same time, yun nga po, yun ba ay expertise ng OWA? Yung pagpapasilitate ng loans, pagkukolekta and all that. Kasi in the past, they did that already. Pero mukhang hindi siya successful. But it would be good, of course, to verify with OWA in terms of evidence. So yun lang po, Chair. Salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Ellen Sana. Uh, si Senator Risa would like to... Or Senator Aini, Senator Bato, Senator... Yes, Chair. Please feel free. Thank, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you po. Um, una po isang uh, follow-up question kay Admin Hans tungkol sa mga bills natin on the Credit Assistance Act. Uh, Admin Hans, ano na po ba yung status ng uh, repatriation program ng ating mga kababayan? Ilan po ba sila nag-avail of na ng program na ito? Tapos sa kanila po, ilan na yung nag-request or nag-avail of nung credit or financial assistance na iyon mula sa OWA? At sila po ba ay, or sa tingin niyo po ba kailangan natin ng financial literacy program para sa mga OFWs? Opo, thank you. Thank you, Sen. Risa. Uh, yung bilang po nang na pauwi na sa home regions ay umakit na ng 165,000 as of today, starting May 15. Uh, yung May 15 kasi, yan yung uh, date na lumabas na yung uh, swab test results, PCR test results, or at least most of the results. Uh, gawa nung requirement ng swabbing or, or PCR testing for all returning OFWs. That's why doon na effect yun sa May 15. So that's 165,000. Uh, meron po tayong uh, mga nag-avail nung financial assistance uh, which is yung 10,000 uh, peso uh, dole ACAP uh, program. Uh, I would say mga of the 160,000 cent, I would say mga 60%. 60% po okay. apply doon sa ACAP uh, because ang 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 sense po natin ay ay meron pa rin yung mga kararating lang na hindi pa masyado alam yung programa and uh, are just now applying uh, for the program. And uh, doon sa doon sa Just to give uh, uh, admin hands admin hands and lang just to give uh, some 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 uh, 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 information no? as of june a total of 162,266 OFWs have received benefits under doles acap uh, this would represent 64.1% of the targeted uh, 250,000 OFWs uh, beneficiaries just to put on uh, on record in the perhaps the, uh, the logical the logical question is, uh, it's only 64.1%. Ang target is 250,000. After four months of implementation, we wanted also to find out anong nangyayari, bakit hindi natin ma-reach pa yung 250,000. Mm -mm. Yes, so, just to put on record. Thank you, Senator Risa. Salamat, Chair. And therefore, Admin Hans, kung itong 64% na naka-avail of na, and then yung 30 plus percent na hindi pa nag-a-avail, paano po maaabot sila? And sila po ba ay nangangailangan yung financial literacy program? Yes, uh, definitely financial literacy uh, will, will come in handy. Uh, uh, ang, ang, ang alam po natin ngayon, na uh, ayon din sa DTI at DA, ay uh, medyo nagbago ang rulebook when it comes to financial literacy, when it comes to COVID. Uh, hindi mm -hmm. lahat ng negosyo ng pre-COVID ay magtatagumpay sa COVID uh, period. So, uh, we we have been assured naman po by our partners in DA and DTI uh, na meron silang mga prescribed or or suggested areas of investment uh, or or livelihood uh, para matulungan magabayan po at nakaangkla na rin ito sa financial literacy. Uh, doon po sa doon po sa mga kailangan pang maabot ay malaking tulong po itong uh, bahagi ho ng 5 billion supplemental budget that we got, 1 billion of, of this will be devoted to ACAP. And then dito sa Bayanihan 2, meron 2 billion pa na padating. So that's a total of 3 billion coming in. So, so, so malaki ho ang pag-asa natin na mahagip natin yung, yung balanse o yung kailangan pang tulungan dito sa Dole ACAP. Salamat, Admin Hans. Uh, Chair, sunod po sa mga tanong tungkol dun sa proposed Magna Carta of 
uh, seafarers na uh, tulad po ni Sen Nancy at at least dalawa pa natin mga kasama yun po yung yung bill ko. Uh, siguro tanong pa rin kay Admin Hans sa OWA no. Uh, isa po sa uh, talagang matagal na problema ng mga seafarers. Oh and speaking of which salamat kay Asek Foz uh, Mr. Chair dun sa kanilang inputs kanina tungkol sa inclusion of direct hires tapos yung pagpapalawak at pagdedetalye tungkol sa usapin ng repatriation. Uh, yung compassionate visits kung may sakit na siguro pwedeng pumaloob dun sa medical care uh, sa proposed um, marino bills or Magna Carta of Filipino seafarers. At yung sinabi din po ni Asik Foz na uh, yun na nga po, I really appreciate Chair no? yung paggamit ng seafarer bilang mas gender responsive kesa sa term ng seamen. So balik po kay Admin Han sa OWA. So isa po talaga sa matagal na problema nga ng mga seafarers yung uh, kanilang retirement benefits. So it's a common concern especially among uh, aging seafarers na hindi na sila naha-hire dahil sa kanilang edad. Yung iba sa kanila kasi bata ng 45 pa lang or 50. So maitanong po kay Admin Hans, um, ano po ba yung plano, mga plano ng OWA para Uh, tugunan yung issue nito. Uh, may may programa ba yung industriya tulad halimbawa ng retirement benefits? Uh, okay. At siguro sisimulan ko po dun sa basic point that uh, uh, we heard Sen. Amy say kanina, which is yung welfare nature uh, ng OWA. Uh, right now, we stand that uh, uh, 18.9 billion yung ating trust fund. And uh, essentially, Uh, it's a welfare fund, uh, which means uh, we cater to the distressed or OFWs who have welfare and protection concerns. Mm -hmm. uh, there are social benefit programs that is enumerated under the 2016 charter. So you din po, din devote din po yung uh, pondo para doon. Pero yun pong retirement, uh, mm -hmm. which is a more far-reaching program, I think yes. po designed ang trust fund for that uh, for the simple reason na uh, one yung mandate wala sa mandate and number two yung sustainability. Uh, kaya uh, tayo po we look toward the the recent uh, amendments to the SSS law for instance mm -hmm. uh, requiring uh, re uh, registration with the SSS for OFWs. So yun po ang sa tingin namin po, sa mas long term uh, pension or retirement programs. <coughs> or OFWs. The closest that we have to this is which, uh, not, not even close, actually, yung rebate program, uh, mm -hmm. which itinilaga po ninyo ng Kongreso ng 2016 OWA Charter uh, na pinapatakbo na po natin but it's, it's again, it's it's not even close kasi uh, the benefits for the rebate program for long-standing OWA members 10 years and over ranges from 900 pesos to 13,000. Only so this is this is far less than than any desired uh, retirement fund for any OFW. And I guess uh, admin hands bilang miyembro ng komite ite take korin under advisement yung sinabi niyo. I think importante na kapag nag uh, uh, titingin kami ng retirement benefits, these are entitlements ng working people, uh, benefits under the law. So hindi talaga kaya ng saklawin kahit in concept ng isang welfare fund. Kasi di ba hindi lang ito sa pinang welfare pero karapatan talaga. Uh, ng mga seafarers. And I think important yung sinabi nyo na dapat mag-keep a pace yung, uh, yung provision ng ganitong karapatan dun sa mga uh, companion measures. Ika nga, yung 2016 charter nyo at mismo yung um, SSS law. So, thank you sa inputs na yun. Could we also say, uh, Admin Hans, na yung uh, hiring age ay bahagi ng diskriminasyon 40 to 50 years pa lang hindi na uh, hina-hire. Uh, is that uh, 40 to 50 years is not yet retirable age, di po ba? Hindi po, hindi po, Sen. And uh, ang OWA naman po, uh, as we are with the Dole family, are fully supportive of the anti-age discrimination measures that your, your good uh, Congress has already passed the good house. Good Salamat po. Salamat para dyan, uh, Admin Hans. Uh, going to another point, um, it's, a, it's a particular case, no? Gusto ko lang i-raise sa hearing na ito, yung plight ni uh, Mr. Borhal, isa po siyang chief cook na nagtatrabaho sa container ship ng 
North Team Shipping Company sa palibot po ng Middle East. Uh, humihingi po siya ng tulong na ma-repatriate at yung repatriation po nila ay dalawang beses na pong kansela uh, dahil may issue daw sa processing ng visa nila. Uh, yung contract niya supposedly nag natapos nung 25 ng Abril, so tatlong buwan na, ya, apat na buwan na, tapos pumirma po siya ng isang uh, kontrata na may three-month extension hanggang 25 rin ng Hulyo. So three-month extension. Eh, so sa total, inabot na po siya ng 13 months. Bukod dito, wala pang bayad yung kanyang overtime simula nung Mayo pa dahil daw sa pandemya ayon sa management nila no sa North Team Shipping Company so ano pong uh, masasabi ng uwa tungkol dito ano pong relief ang pwedeng uh, hingiin at asahan uh, ni Mr. Borhal Opo kailangan lang ho natin sen malaman yung detalye ni uh, okay. Mr. Borhal para maayudahan natin contact info name and company address etc mapuntahan po agad ang ating welfare officer ka kaakibat po din ito ng uh, mga programa sa Polo sa ating labor attaches sa Saudi so tutulong po tayo sa kanya sabay nito kakausapin din yung employer para makuha yung kaukulang benepisyo uh, meron ho siyang malamang na recruitment agency o manning agency mm -hmm. dito sa Pilipinas so so kakusapin din po natin o ipatatawag natin yung manning agency para panagutan yung responsibilidad. Salamat po Admin Hans. Uh, tungkol naman po sa illegal the blacklist. Notes, uh, if I may, yes, Chair. Uh, of course, Chair. If I may. I just wanted yes, Chair, to also course. point out, uh, uh, ad ad Admin Hans, no? as of August 19, there is a uh, lesser number of uh, OFWs awaiting repatriation. I have here with me some figures from 19,591 in June to 14,285 this August. Uh, I, I am very much aware of the efforts of Admin Hans and uh, OWA and uh, we'd like to commend the, 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 the heroes of OWA. Uh, however, every day din po, Admin Hans, we, 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 we are still receiving a lot of messages in our uh, emails, uh, text, social media pages from OFWs around the world. And yung binanggit ni uh, Senator Risa sa Saudi, meron din po tayo uh, na nakuha dyan sa Dam Damam Saudi Arabia uh, requesting for assistance uh, ayan po for uh, uh, repatriation po. And uh, alam nyo, medyo desperado at kung titignan nyo po maigi yung buong sulat, eh, medyo nade-depressed na po siya at uh, uh, I hope we'll be able to 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 act on this immediately. We'll we'll give you all this, uh, admin hands. Yes, yes, recent, yes, recently there's also one in Beirut, Lebanon, also uh, requesting for repatriation. Um, after her employer refused to pay her salary in the last two months, cancellation of her flight to the Philippines, uh, following the uh, Beirut incidents. These are some of the few of uh, the messages that we have been uh, receiving uh, daily. Uh, meron din po sa Qatar, uh, requested also our uh, assistance for repatriation and around uh, 128 uh, OFWs po due to the loss of their jobs, uh, cancellation of their uh, resident permits. So I hope uh, may, may, may bigay lang po namin to Pasensya na Senator Risa for, for bringing this up sure. because I think it's, it's very important. Thank you, uh, Admin Hans. Si Senator Bato yata may idadagdag. Senator Bato, please. Uh, Senator Bato, nakamute po kayo. Yan, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Hello? Yes, you may proceed, Senator Bato. Yan yeah, kay Administrator Kakdak lang, uh, balikan ko lang yung nabanggit niya kanina na effective uh, September daw. Magkano halaga yun yung plano niyo na ibigay na assistance sa... Uh, Mga ano po, Sen? Ano po, Sen? Ano po, Sen? Ano po, Sen? Effective September Group, livelihood po yan, Sen. It's a 150,000 to 1 million peso grant. Uh, oh, group. group livelihood. Group livelihood. Hindi po pwede individual? Wala individual dyan? Hindi, hindi Sen. Uh, kasi ang uh, isang nakikita kasi natin, batay sa karanasan, Sen, mas malaki ang chance ng tagumpay kung group po, Sen. Kaya't ang napagpasyahan ng OWA board ay encourage 
ang uh, group livelihood uh, program sa lalo na sa panahon ng pandemya sen baka mas matibay ang negosyo kung grupo po sila K kasi ha uh, masaya kasi ako nung sinabi mo na aabutan ng 100 to pataas yung ibibigay ninyo unlike yung sinabi ni senator Aimee Marcos kanina na 50,000 na talagang kulang dahil marami akong nakausap na mga repatriated repatriated na mga OFWs na sabi na sir baka kumabigyan lang kami ng assistance pambili ng motorsiklo dahil nga ngayon ang pinaka in demand ngayon na hanap buhay yung mga lalamo mag uh, or yung uh, panda food panda gusto na sumali sa mga ganun sana ang halaga kasi ng motorsiklo ngayon ay 100 to 120,000 o 150,000 kaya masaya ako kung mabigyan natin yung mga ta yes, mga yes. OFW natin diyan makabili sila ng motor pero yes, group pala, group. So, uh, wala tayo yes, magawa ng kung group. Yes, and isang nga ho talaga sa naisip yun, ha, yung ganong klaseng negosyo, uh, siguro ang kailangan na lang, uh, Sen, magiya yung yung isang grupo ng OFWs na mapag-isipan na imbis na magkahiwalay sila, uh, mag-band together sila. Uh, makakabili rin ng maraming motor, halimbawa, Sen, yung isang milyong piso. So, Uh, siguro kailangan lang maigiya yung mga kababayan natin sen para hindi sila ma-discourage dahil group. Uh, pwede may pag-asa pa rin naman ho, uh, magsama-sama sila at ma-achieve -ma din yung yung objective nila na magkaroon ng motor para Pero magkaroon so, ng abo. Ako ay, if, if I have my way, uh, mag-suggest na sana ako sa inyo. Baka pwedeng uh, hanap rin kayo ng paraan na makabigay kayo ng individual lalong-lalo na yung kahit na ang hingi na lang ninyong requirement, yung driver's license lang, na kung pwede ba talaga siya mag-drive ng motor, sigurado ba talaga siyang bibili ng motor para pang-delivery. Kahit na yun lang siguro, ako, suggestion ko lang, kung kakayanin ba, isang uh, tao, kahit na 100,000, 120, makabili niya ng motor, yan ang pinaka-indemand ngayon na trabaho, eh. kumikita talaga sila sa delivery ngayon. Ayun lang, sa akin lang, pero kung hindi kaya, oh, wala tayong magawa. Thank you, thank you. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. Salamat, Mr. Chairman. May I proceed? May I proceed? Salamat, Chair. Um, Admin Hans, tungkol po sa illegal blacklisting ng mga seafarers, uh, alam niyo po, itong pandemic, marami po yung lumapit sa aking tanggapan din para humingi ng tulong. Pero sila'y takot na takot na makilala at uh, baka daw maisama sila sa blacklisting ng mga manning agencies. So, oh actually po, in, uh, in addition po kay Admin Hans, kung pwede ko rin pong itanong Mr. Chair si Admin Olalia sa POEA uh, tungkol sa issue ito. And um, bago sila sumagot, Chair, gusto ko lang i-make of record yung pasasalamat ko po kay Admin Olalia at gayon din kay Yusek Dulay ng DFA naman sa mga... Uh, very responsive po at nakakatulong talagang tugon tuwing may i-refer -re din po akong mga paghingi ng tulong sa mga kababayan nating OFWs na gustong ma-repatriate. Uh, most recently, I, I think yung mga ilang mga kababayan natin mula sa Uzbekistan. So maraming salamat din sa inyo, Yuse, uh, uh, Admin Olalia. Tungkol po dito, particular Admin Olalia, sa issue ng blacklisting, ano po kayang magandang gawin no, para maiwasan yung illegal na blacklisting uh, laban sa mga seafarers? And then, Chair, pagkatapos po ni Admin Olalia, baka pwede pong tanungin din si Ms. Ellen ulit ng CMA at si Attorney uh, Dennis Goretsya. Goretsyo, baka may specific suggestions din po sila, no? mga particular na mukahit na pwede isama sa bills po natin. So, Admin Olalia, please, ano pong gagawin natin dyan sa illegal blacklisting na iyan? Good morning po, Chair. Good morning, good morning po, po uh, San Luisa. Good morning po, Your Honors. Good morning. Uh, bago ko po sagutin yung blacklisting issue nyo, ma'am, sagutin ko yung una kanina kay OFW Borhal na natapos yung kontrata niya noong Abril, pagkatapos na extension po ng tatlong buwan, pero hindi mm -hmm. po na po tamang sweldo, no? Apo. Gusto na po niya umuwi. Yung mm -hmm. po uh, responsibility po ng repatriation rest upon the employer. At dahil po sa joint and solidary liability po mm -hmm. ng mga money agencies, yung mga ahensya po ang may responsibilidad para i-repatriate yung ating mga seafarers. Mm -hmm. Tumutulong po ang government. Like for example, ang, ang OWA, ang DFA, pag po nag-fail na yung ating mga money 
Francis. Mm-hmm. Pero kami po sa POEA, yan po yung aming uh, mandato. Sinasabihan po natin palagi yung mga money agencies to monitor strictly your deployed CPRS. Tignan po ang kalagayan nila. Pag may sakit po sila, alalayan natin. At pag gusto mm-hmm. po nilang umuwi at tapos na po ang kontra- kontrata, pauwiin po natin sila. Fail, mm-hmm. If they fail to do that, suspendido po ang lisensya nila. Yun po ang ginagawa po natin sa POA. Very strict po tayo dyan, ma'am. Yung po hindi nabayaran, yung po hindi nabayaran na salary po ni OFW Borhal, ipapatawag po natin yung uh, agency po na concern. At uh, pipilitin po natin bayaran niya yan dahil responsibility po niya yan. Kung hindi, makakasuhan po siya ng recruitment relation for failure to comply with the provision of the employment contract. Po salamat po, yun. Admin Olalia. Maraming salamat po. Isasubmit po namin gaya ng uh, instruction ng chair yung mga detalye ni Mr. Borhal para maagap nyo rin po matugunan yung kanilang sitwasyon at kahilingan. Yes, Thank po, you, Admin yes. Olalia. Mm-hmm. Doon po sa second po 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 sa, yun, opo, yung blacklist. Po, 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 isa pong mm-hmm. violation din yan ng mga money agency, yung namimili ka ng mga mm-hmm. CTRs na gusto mo lamang i-deploy Lalo-lalo na pag yung seafarer ay makulit at very assertive mm-hmm. sa rights niya. Kasi isa po yun, hindi yeah, eh. po natin sa seafarers eh. Dapat um, pag-achieve uh, nila yung rights nila. Yun po yung unang-una natin okay. po sa ating mong mga programa. No? Dahil pag tahimik po ang seafarer, ay aapihin lamang ng ating mga seafarer. Bawal po mm-hmm. sa maning agency na mabili sila ng mga seafarers na yung obedient at yung gusto lamang nila ang nasusunod. Yun po ang mm-hmm. isa sa mga itinuturo po natin sa seafarer. Kaya i-upheld po natin yung rights po ng CFRR kapag ini-insist nila at ina-assert po yung kanilang mga rights. So, tulad po na nasabi ko, blacklisting is a form of a recruitment violation at sasampahan po natin ng kaso yung ahensya po na nagpa-blacklist ng mga OFW. Okay. Salamat po, Admin Olalia. Chair, maaari din pong kayang marinig kung may mungkahi si na Ms. Ellen ng CMA at si Attorney uh, Dennis Goretsyo tungkol dito sa anong magandang gawin para maiwasan at maparusahan ang uh, blacklisting sa mga seafarers? Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair, maaari po bang matanong din si na uh, Ms. Ellen, ang CMA at si Attorney Goretsyo? Paano, paano natin iiwasan at parusahan ang blacklisting? Yes, Attorney uh, Dennis uh, Goretsyo, you're recognized. Um, Uh, Your Honors, uh, actually it's existing na kasi yan yung tinatawag nating um, yung blacklisting penalties. Ang nagiging problema lang kasi ngayon dahil meron tayong official blacklisting doon sa POA yung mga offenses pero meron tayong tinatawag na illegal blacklisting. Ito yung, mga, yung isang tawag lang ng, ng manning agency, yung mga seafarers natin na gusto sumakay, hindi na yung mga kasakay kasi they will give parang bad uh, character check doon sa mga seafarers. And siguro ito, pwedeng i- Like, doon sa discrimination part, yung provision on discrimination na idagdag isang phrase doon na, na wag mag-discriminate on the seafarers based on their on their assert, uh, yung pag-assert nila na kanilang legal rights under the contract, under under the law, para mas clear na kapag uh, you ample on, uh, you you violate the right of the seafarers to, to assert their um, uh, legal right, then mm-hmm. you will be facing a penalty under the law. Yung, yung blacklist nga yan. Yun nga lang kasi, okay. uh, siguro wala pa kasing talagang mechanism on how to uh, um, penalize yung ganong klaseng uh, blacklisting. Siguro that will be a good uh, portion on on our, on our the Magna Carta to ensure mm-hmm. that our seafarers are protected in in their um, uh, pra, uh, in their um, yung assertion of their rights. Yeah. Salamat, Attorney Dennis. Chair, pwede rin bang matanong si Ms. Ellen ng CMA kung may mungkahi din sila? Sige po. Uh, Salamat, Chair. Please. Thank you. Okay na po. Narinig ba ako? Uh, okay. Thank you, Chair. Doon po sa... Uh, Salamat po sa opportunity. On the blacklisting, gap, gaya nga po nang sabi ni Attorney Dennis at saka ni uh, Admin Ulalia, nasa rules po yan ng POEA. Ang practical na, de, na problema, yung burden of proof na paano ko mm-hmm. na-blacklist. Kasi usually yan yung mga nagpo-protesta na unfair ang treatment, na contract violation. Kaya lang, di, paano mo ipuprobebang bin-blacklist ka? nang pag nag-apply ka na uli. Kasi isang network ang mga seat manning agencies eh. Kaya laging yun yung isang kahirapan. At lalo na kung bata pa po yung seafarer, 
Yan mm-hmm. ay karir nila. Profession nila yan. Kaya ang ating record ng seafarers, hanggang 40 years yan, nagsisifaring. Kaya mm-hmm. ayaw nilang ma-jeopardize yung opportunities pa nila, future opportunities to go on board the vessel pag nagreklamo sila doon sa kanilang uh, discrimination uh, na, na, na issue. So yun yung isang practical difficulties. In the law, maklaro naman yan, pero ang hirap kasi yung burden ay nasa seafarer. So siguro yung susug kay Attorney Dennis, kung masampulan, kasi yung ang, kung isususpend, masususpend ba yan, mag-a-act accordingly yung ating POEA against the airing manning agency or the, the vessel itself, baka medyo masiryosohin na hindi po pwedeng ang burden lang ay sa manggagawa. The mm-hmm. other point is, meron po kasi kami during the COVID, uh, a simple issue as na interview siya ng media at mm-hmm. uh, what, tapos po yung kontrata, umuwi siya sa Pilipinas at maghihintay ng bagong kontrata with the same vessel. Pero dahil siya ay na-interview sa <laughs> media on the effect of COVID sa kanya, which was very personal, hindi na po siya inano na siya. Wow. Parang pinarusahan na po siya noong kanyang uh, uh, ahensya. Uh, she went through the process, may disciplinary action, online and all that. Pero ang bottom line, because she said something na tingin nila ay ma, ano yun, mapangit doon sa kanilang uh, barko. When it was something very personal, ano yung epekto ng COVID sa kanya. Pero uh, on the other issues mentioned, for example, on the Magna Carta for Seafarers, yung sinabi ni ASEC falls on the emergency repatriation, compassionate mm-hmm. visit, yan po ay yes. nasa mandatory insurance provision naman natin, Section 37 ng RA 10022. And the good thing with the seafarers, lahat po sila ay may money agencies. Of course, I think mabigat din ang loob ng ating money agencies kasi nga automatic naman na meron silang maraming provisions na even without the application of the mandatory insurance as provided for by RA 10022. But particularly, ang um, ano po, yung medical. Pero yun nga pala, medical, hindi necessarily, huwag ko kung everything na medical would fall under emergency repatriation. Pero mm-hmm. medical evacuation, medical mm-hmm. repatriation, kasama po yan sa coverage ng mandatory insurance. And of course, the compassionate visit. Na yung isang member of the family can visit. So hindi ko lang kung paano application yan sa mga nagbabarko. So yun po mm-hmm. yung sigurong dagdag. And uh, I think, Uh, magandang maituloy na itong ating man, Magna Carta for Seafarers kasi nga maran, bagsak ngayon but eventually it will start sailing. The ships will yes. have to start sailing. Yeah. It will yes. ang, ang world economy pag hindi. At uh, oh. the, the cruise ships will, may take uh, a backseat for a while pero yun pong iba na nasa ibang barko natin naghihintay. Meron na po kung alam na nagpo-process na po sa, kasi talagang very essential. Very critical mm-hmm. ang presensya ng maritime uh, fleets natin where they employ a lot of our seafarers po. Thank Sige, you. Thank you po. Thank Salamat, you. Uh, siguro, Chair. Senator Risa, let's, let's give yes, a chance dun sa Amos, Amosup, pati sa yes. JMG, kay mm-hmm. President Oka. Yes, I think they are uh, both around. May, may, may we hear from them, kay President uh, Conrado Oka from uh, Amosup. Uh, sir, mm-hmm. you, you're recognized. Okay, maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, on behalf of the more than 100,000 overseas Filipino seafarers, of the Associated Marine Officers and Siemens Union of the Philippines around us, I wish to express our collective appreciation to the Senate Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resource Development for inviting the union to this video conference on the various Senate bills, proposing a Magna Carta of Filipino seafarers and the National Seafarers Administration. I also believe that the aforementioned Senate bills can be effective measures that would greatly benefit overseas and domestic Filipino maritime professionals, protect their rights, and promote their welfare. More than seven years ago, on August 20, 2013, the Maritime Labor Convention of 2006 entered into force after the Philippines became the 30th member state of the International Association to ratify the convention 12 months earlier. Since then, the MLC 2006 has been amended three times. The 2014 amend- Amendment on Financial Security for seafarers in cases of abandonment and to assure compensation for contractual claims, which entered into force on January 17, 2017. The 2016 Amendments on Eliminating Seaport Harassment 
and bullying, which entered into force on January 8, 2019, and the 2018 amendments on the continued payment of wages and other entitlements while a seafarer is held captive or on or off the ship as a result of piracy or armed robbery, which are expected to enter into force December 26, 2020. Among all of the 97 ratifying countries to this convention, it is most imperative for the Philippines to ensure national compliance with MLC 2006 as amended through a national law, simply because of its status as the major provider of seafarers to the world's maritime fleets. In the wake of the global COVID-19 pandemic, the urgent need to protect our seafarers as international key workers has been placed under sharper focus. The governments of 14 maritime countries, including the Philippines, have recently acknowledged in the International Maritime Virtual Summit last July 2020 that at least 200,000 seafarers are estimated to require immediate repatriation with many serving on extended crew contracts who are overdue to return home, in addition to a similar number of seafarers that urgently need to join their ships in order to allow the world's internationally trading vessels to continue to operate safely. There is an increasing risk that fatigue and mental health issues could lead to serious maritime accidents, that the health and well-being of seafarers is paramount and is inextricably linked to the continued safety and efficiency of ship operations. Within the context of the operational challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a greater need to ensure that the protective provisions of MLC 2006, as amended, are enforced. It is information note on maritime labor issues and coronavirus. The International Labor Office urges that the parties involved should make every attempt to comply with their obligations under MLC 2006, non-compliance only being excused when compliance is materially and objectively impossible by reason of the occurrence of an irresistible event. While authorities are encouraged to be pragmatic in their approach, under the current circumstances, they should also ensure that the COVID-19 pandemic is not used as an excuse to breach MLC 2006. Since the 15th Congress, several bills proposing a Magna Carta have been filed. Amos have actively participated in discussions and the deliberations on those proposed bills in the Maritime Industry Tripartite Council, or MITC, which endorsed the 16th Congress a version of the Mark Magna Carta for seafarers that was approved by the Philippine Maritime Social Partners and stakeholders sometime in 2015. After a careful reading, we find that Senate Bill Number 135 of uh, Mr. Chair Senator Sani Angara, Senate Bill Number 357 of Senator Lisa Antiveros, Senator Bill Number 300 of Senator Ramon Rebilla, Senator B Senate Bill 1369 of Senator Maria Lourdes Nancy Binay, and Senate Bill Number 1745 of Senator John Joel Villanueva are very similar and consistent with the version of the Seafarers Bill of Rights that had previously achieved broad tripartite consensus. We noted some points of difference among the Senate bills which we believe can be readily reconciled at a technical level. level. In particular, Senate Bill number 1745 contains most, if not all, of the salient provisions of Senate Bills 135, 357, 300, and 1369 and includes new and updated provisions reflecting the recent amendments to the Maritime Labor Convention of 2006 and to other international maritime regulations. The bill also provides for additional protection to seafarers in terms of global health emergencies, such as the current COVID-19 pandemic. Said Senate bill may be considered as the basis of a working draft for a consolidated Senate bill on the Magna Carta. On the other hand, as regards to Senate Bill Number 97 of, of the Honorable Senator Grace Poe, establishing a national seafarers administration, it is the position of AMOSUP that the same may be discussed and deliberated by maritime workers, maritime employers, and concerned government agencies at the Maritime Industry Tripartite Council, which can come up with a version that is acceptable to and supported by the entire maritime industry for consideration by this honorable Senate committee 
in deliberating on this matter. Initially, Amazon is invited to support Senate Bill No. 937 in terms of its proposed organizational setup wherein the National Seafarers Administration will be an attached agency of the Department of Labor and Employment. However, we respectfully suggest that recent developments in the maritime sector be considered, such as the abolition of the Maritime Training Council, whose functions have been taken over by the Maritime Industry Administration or authority as a single maritime administration responsible for the- Amosop, Amosop, you have one more minute. And you have one more minute. SDCW Convention by virtue of Republic Act number 1065. Based on the foregoing, therefore, Amosop respectfully endorses and fully supports the aforementioned Senate bills for consideration mm -hmm. by this Honorable Senate Committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, President Oka. We'll, 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 we'd like to hear from uh, JMG also. And uh, again, this is an opportunity to uh, uh, advise our resource persons, our guests, to please submit your position uh, paper. Please uh, give us your comments kung hindi man kayo makapagsalita or may kulang sa sinabi nyo, gusto nyo dagdagan, uh, you, you may do so, please. We'll give the floor to uh, uh, Mr. Marquez of uh, JMG. Is he around? Yes, 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 sir. yes sir. You have, you yes, have sir. the floor. Yeah. Magandang umaga po uh, sa ating lahat, sa mga distinguished senators na nandito po, especially sa ating chairman. The joint manning group uh, representing the licensed manning agencies and foreign principals deploy about 75% of our seafarers on board ocean-going vessels of various types, uh, including the cruise vessels. Po. We certainly support any law that will improve the lives of our seafarers through credit facilities being made available for their needs, especially as seed capital for any business they want to enter to. Our only hope is that if such loans or credit facilities are made available to them, our banks uh, should be able to provide special interest rates that will allow them a better chance of uh, succeeding in any business that they want to enter into. We also particularly support the Magna Carta for Filipino Seafarers, authored by uh, several senators, and I believe it is just a matter of reconciling uh, the various versions so that we can come up with a good uh, and effective Magna Carta for the seafarers. GMG's comments and proposed amendments will be submitted and proposed and, and uh, submitted through a JMG position paper, which we will be submitting to all the senators who authored the bill. Uh, JMG, JMG also supports the proposed law creating the National Seafarers Administration, authored by Senator Grace Poe. Actually, the seafaring industry started with the Department of Labor creating a National Seamen's Board. But later on, they combined the administration and regulatory functions of the DOLE uh, on both land-based and sea-based, creating the POEA, that created the POEA. We believe that uh, creating an NSA as proposed uh, will now provide focused attention to the seafaring sector, which is significantly different significantly unique and peculiar compared to the land-based OFW sector. And we would like to uh, be, uh, we would like to request that we be allowed to participate so that the honorable senators will be able to understand uh, the uniqueness and the need to separate the sea base from the land-based sector. Regarding po sa comments po ng ating Honorable Senator uh, Lisa Ontiveros, uh, we would like to say that we in the money agencies, we as uh, the biggest uh, group of money agents, uh, do not subscribe to blacklisting. Uh, we would like to just say that uh, uh, blacklisting uh, is not, can, cannot prosper uh, in this industry because First of all, uh, the seafarers are on contractual employment. It is the seafarers' right to transfer to other companies after the contract is completed. And so, 
uh, the same in the same manner, does the the employers of the seafarers have also uh, the freedom to assess the performance of the of the seafarer uh, in the past vessel that they boarded, and if they uh, evaluate him to be uh, not as uh, not meeting the standards being set by individual ship owners. That is the main reason why uh, sometimes seafarers are not re-employed. Re but I'd like to assure the, the good senator that marami po sa ating mga members ng ating uh, joint manning group are uh, very responsible and very concerned uh, about uh, taking care of the welfare of their own seafarers. Most of us have uh, scholarship programs. Most of us have cadetship programs. Most of us have own our own training training facilities to improve the quality and competence of our hard seafarers. Uh, while we admit that there are a few among our colleagues who have uh, caused uh, concern uh, in the way they handle their seafarers, we would like to say that. Uh, Generally speaking, we believe that the seafaring industry is the most organized and the most uh, orderly uh, sector of the OFW. Uh, uh, our colleagues from the unions are here, and we would like to say that uh, we see eye to eye in many uh, concerns of the seafarers, uh, so much so that it does not take us very long to discuss and come up with solutions whenever there are specific concerns. Yun lang po, marami pong salamat. Thank you salamat, very much, Mr. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Lisa, would you like to continue? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, I just have one more uh, question, na. pero a quick comment okay. lang doon sa sinabi ng resource person sa okay. joint manning group. Ah, Mr. Chair, can okay. I be heard? Mr. Yes, Chair. Po. Uh, Senator Risa, then Senator Nancy. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sam Nancy. So just a quick comment dun sa sinabi po ng resource person sa joint manning group. And then one last uh, question, Mr. Chair, for uh, for the he during this hearing. Um, I guess uh, yung isang uh, uh, mulutang sa isip ko ay our further um, deliberations and then when the chair will call for the technical work on the consolidation of the Magna Carta of Filipino seafarers bills would be a good opportunity na i-problematize at i-work out talaga yung sinasabi simula ni na Admin Olalia kanina ano yung mga concrete uh, mechanisms para maiwasan talaga yung mga kaso ng discrimination through blacklisting no um consistent with uh, previous conventions and laws tapos itong um Inuhubog natin ngayon uh, sa leadership ng ng chair. It might be interesting tignan yung ano yung statistics ng mga kababayan nating seafarers na nagre-reklamo ng actual blacklisting dahil sila ay uh, uh, assertive sa kanilang mga karapatan. And then ibang ga dun sa datos naman, for example, ng joint manning group na yung sinasabi nga ni Sir kanina na yung mga they don't meet the standards and therefore hindi na nire-renew uh, yung mga yung mga kontrata and i think uh, yung 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 isang provision o section nung uh, ating mga Magna Carta of Filipino Seafarers bills na pwedeng uh, i-resolve yan proactively moving forward ay yung sections on the promotion and protection of seafarers rights and welfare pati yung rights to just terms and conditions of work at baka din yung right to self organization and collective bargaining so lastly mr chair just a a question uh baka sa sa POEA din kay admin Olalia regarding po sa uh, pasya ng IATF na pansamantalang isuspinde yung overseas deployment ng mga medical and allied health workers pursuant sa POEA Governing Board Resolution Number no. 9 Series of 2020. Yung layunin nung uh, naturang polisiya ay para yung DOH at lahat ng ating mga ospital at healthcare facilities ng LGUs at ibang entities ay uh, ma-encourage sila na i-hire 
uh, yung itong mga ating medical and allied health workers para isupplement yung current workforce. Um, pwede bang maitanong sa, well, baka mas sa DOH pala ito, Mr. Chair, how many nurses ang kailangan natin, ilang mga nurse ang kailangan para sa COVID response, at meron na ba tayong mga uh, numerong ito? May mga lumapit kasi, Mr. Chair, sa opisina ko, mga grupo na, na mga nurse na may visa na po, may ticket na po, napapaalis na ng bansa, pero dahil po dito nga sa IATF resolution, hindi na po makaalis at malapit nang mag-expire pa yung kanilang IELTS at saka medical uh, examination. Sila ba ay uh, hindi naman naha-hire o walang paraan ba sila na ma-hire? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sa DOH nga po siguro. Yes, thank, thank, thank you, uh, Senator Risa. No, I think it's important to note na hal lahat po tayo nakaka-receive. Uh, I, I'm sure ma 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 uh, makakaranig tayo from DOH. Nandito po si uh, Direk, uh, Dr. Joel Benaventura. And let me just also point out, no, on June 18, June 18, we wrote a letter to IATF requesting the IATF headed by DOH Secretary Duque to enlighten us on its uh, plans, if any, uh, on the lifting of or, or partially lifting of the uh, deployment ban of health workers, uh, the processing of their documents, provision of uh, uh, assistance to them, the establishment and, and establishment of a referral mechanism to our healthcare system so that uh, uh, they can be included in the ongoing DOH hiring program. Uh, alam nyo, dear colleagues, uh, Senator Risa, June 18 pa ho itong letter natin and every single time we, 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 we get a chance to ask DOH uh, sa mga hearings natin, sa Bayanihan 1, sa Bayanihan 2, dito sa uh, Committee on Health Hearings, etc. Nire-raise po natin ito. But unfortunately, we have not received any response from the task task force. We have not received wow. anything from Secretary Duque regarding this particular issue. So I hope that uh, this time uh, we, we, we'll, we'll, we'll be able to hear something from uh, DOH. Uh, Director uh, Dr. Benaventura, if uh, you're there or from anyone from DOH, uh, may we hear from you. Uh, Chair? Yes, sir. This uh, is uh, yeah, Dr. Ronquillo, may manifest, sir. Ronquillo of uh, Health Planning and Systems Development Team. Yes, sir, you're recognized. You have the floor. Please proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I'd like to uh, address uh, the uh, issue brought about by uh, Senator uh, Hontiveros. Well, uh, in a previous IATF resolution, that's uh, IATF resolution number 23, uh, it stated there to uh, allow uh, travel of uh, health workers with uh, contracts uh, after March, after uh, before March 8. So perfected contracts before March 8. And so this was uh, uh, health workers were given the opportunity to uh, travel. Uh, but there was an issue within uh, March and then up to uh, very recently, because again, uh, it seemed that uh, health workers with perfected contracts were not allowed to leave the country. And hence, in the IATF resolution number 64, it was clarified there that uh, health workers with perfected uh, contracts as of uh, March 8 are allowed to uh, leave the country. But uh, as we speak also, we also want to see the uh, breakdown of health workers leaving the country as there were some manifestations that uh, we also need health workers in the country. But we'd like to know exactly from uh, our partners from uh, OA and PUA, the type of uh, cadres that are needed. For example, uh, wh while we have uh, nurses leaving the country, we'd also like to know uh, what type of specialty nurses are leaving the country because as yet, we also need uh, ICU nurses or in in intensivist nurses. So that's how we're looking at uh, uh, travel for uh, health workers. Well, as of... Uh, as to the hiring, emergency hiring, when we made the initial uh, context of how many exactly do we, uh, we need, that was uh, early uh, March during the uh, pandemic. And uh, with the cases 13, we came up with a projection of around 16,500 health workers. 
These are a cadre of doctors uh, and nurses and uh, medical technologists and other health workers. But uh, as of yet, we compared our projections to the request of uh, hospitals or health facilities that we have. And based on the requests and the approved uh, requests that we have, we approved so far 10,468 approved slots. And out of these approved slots, as we speak, this is as of August 24, 7,850 human resources have already been uh, hired and assigned to different uh, hospitals and uh, temporary treatment and monitoring facilities. So we have a gap of 2,618 as yet to, uh, to fill up. And as regards to uh, the request for OFWs uh, coming in to be part of the uh, workforce for, uh, for health, we were given a list of around uh, 1,700 OFWs. I think that was a list given to us from uh, by uh, POEA. And uh, we called all the uh, 1,700 uh, health workers. Most of these are nurses. We called them uh, with the help of our, our call center agents. But uh, as we speak again uh, today, out of the 1,700, only 209 manifested to be employed. And out of the 209 who manifested to be uh, employed, 109 uh, submitted their uh, documents. And uh, as of uh, today, there are uh, three, has, three has been offered uh, jobs and uh, two are still to be interviewed. So we also have difficulty in uh, getting uh, this uh, them to work. I think the concern po namin dito is that we are offering a job that will, last, that will not last long. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, we have job offers uh, up to December 31 because that's the uh, the budget that we have. And although we see that uh, it will be renewed upon the approval of the 2021 budget, uh, our health workers, our OFWs, are also looking for jobs that are more stable. So yan po yung uh, concern namin ngayon. Mas gugustuhin pa rin nilang lumabas ata ng bansa kasi mas maganda naman po yung offer kaysa yung uh, binibigay ng ating gobyerno as of yet. But all, even if we assure them na yung kontrata natin ay hanggang ngayong taon pa lang, tapos pwede nating i-renew pag na-approve na yung 21, uh, 2021 budget, parang kulang pa po yung assurance sa kanila. Over Mr. Senators. Chair? Mr. Chair? Wait, Director, uh, yes, uh, director, just doctor. one point, no? Just one point that I'd like to raise. Kasi, Director, we have been getting a lot of uh, uh, complaints and uh, letters coming from uh, our nurses, especially healthcare workers. Uh, one of the main reasons why they don't want to to to, to be part of it is yung, yung binabanggit nila na parang three months lang daw po sila. Ayan po, uh, I, I, I'm sharing with you some of some of uh, uh, the letters that I I have been getting. No, three months. Sanda, para may and sila wala ring security of uh, tenure uh, security of their jobs uh, it is not clear uh, honestly no even even for me right now it is not clear about i mean when you talk about this uh, decision about this uh, IATF resolution yung latest is the resolution number 64 um, i don't see uh, anything enticing for our uh, medical uh, health workers para sumama po sila yung isang uh, sumulat po sa atin binanggit po binanggit po niya diyan uh, um, that she does not want to work in the hospital since she will not receive a good salary and her hazard pay will not be paid in the end uh, yung isa naman sabi niya um, we talk in, uh, to share uh, to share that uh, uh, she tried to apply to uh, other hospitals but was not accepted due to her ongoing uh, application uh, for work abroad in, in short uh, director no uh, for, for the sake of our health workers asking uh, for help we, we, we want to be clarified eh? what what one what is really the rationale behind iatf's uh, decision to maintain the overseas uh, deployment ban of our health uh, healthcare workers number two how many uh, health uh, workers does the aitf uh, expect to provide for our healthcare system from this deployment ban. Kanina, binabanggit niyo po yung 
thousands uh, tapos 209 manifested 109 only 109 submitted uh, meron po ba yung kanina tinanong na din ni Senator Risa ano ba yung ideal number ideal number of healthcare workers needed to sufficiently address the current uh, public health emergency otherwise um, kung hindi malinaw po ito eh talagang mga nga pa po tayo at mga nga pa at masasabing hindi talaga konkreto itong plano natin para sa ating uh, mga health workers at uh, siguro yung last how will the deployment of uh, uh, some 700 uh, nurses uh, affect the ongoing hiring exercises of uh, DOH Mr. Chair Please respond Mr. Chair, uh, pwede pagdagdag ko lang doon sa mga queries mo Senator Nancy, please yeah, Siguro Mr. Chair, magandang malaman ano ba yung package na ino-offer natin sa mga health workers. Magkano ang sweldo ba ang uh, ino-offer natin sa kanila? Padagdag lang dun sa listahan ng mga itatanaw mo, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair? Uh, please proceed, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, as I was saying earlier, sir, when we made these early projections in uh, March, the uh, projection based on worst scenario was to uh, contract out around 16,000, around 16,500 uh, health workers. So, this is these are a mix of uh, countries. Most of them are uh, most of them are nurses. Based on the Bayanihan Act One, during that time, the contract was for three months, uh, but now because of the uh, budget that we have, it has been extended up to December 31. So the budget that uh, we have now is being utilized for the contracts from the time we started contracting them until December 31, 20, uh, uh, 20, uh, 2020, uh, 2020. But that is not to say that uh, once we have the Bayanihan Act, and we have the approval of the budget for uh, 2021. That's not to say that we are also going to uh, renew these uh, health workers because we know that uh, uh, we uh, we need them. Uh, the, the salaries that are given are similar or the same salaries that we're giving we are being uh, that are being given to our regular employees. So if these are uh, nurses, Yung entry level po natin ng nurses are salary grade 15, so that's about 32 basic pay and all, of course, the uh, benefits that we uh, provide is the same that are being given to our contract uh, contract workers. But of course, this will improve po pag na uh, approved na rin ho yung Bayanihan Act 2 kasi sa Bayanihan Act 2 meron kami mga in-include doon kagaya ng mga uh, additional uh, allowances, duty allowances, not just for government, uh, health workers uh, catering to COVID, but also private health workers catering to uh, COVID, yung kanilang um, life insurance uh, for those catering to uh, COVID. And we also uh, looked at the manner by which uh, we see the balance between salaries being provided sa government vis-a-vis -vis sa, sa private, uh, private sector. So, we're also looking not just of uh, health workers in the government sector, but also in the private sector. Over, Senator. Salamat, Director. Uh, Salamat, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Just to conclude. Please, please. Uh, Salamat, please. Mr. Chair. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. So uh, through the committee and under the leadership of the chair, I follow up ko na lang po yung mga points na binigay sa atin ni Dr. Ronquillo. Uh, paano natin ma-accommodate optimally yung mga pauwing OFW health human resources natin na tutulong sa ating COVID-19 response while responding dun sa proper protection at compensation sa kanila, pati yung complement ng mga Philippines-based no, na current na health human resources natin, whether sa public or sa private um, health sectors, while, Mr. Chair, of course, while uh, balancing that dun sa karapatan ng ating mga NARS at ibang health workers na makapaglakbay para makapagtrabaho uh, para sa hindi lang economic but professional uh, continuing advancement nila, Mr. Chair. And lastly po, um, just uh, kapag mamarapatin po ng Chair, sana po uh, during the rest of this hearing, nagre-request din po si Attorney Dennis na mabasa yung kanilang statement of support sa ating komite. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. 
and at Arisa will do that uh, later. But uh, just to continue, no, Director, uh, yung target po ninyo, 16,500, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, is, is that correct? That is the target na ma-hire po ninyo? Yes, sir. That's the early projection that we have. Yes, and right now, how many, how many, uh, 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 dito sa target yung nakompleto na, ilan na po yung uh, na-hire natin as of today? Sir, ang na-hire natin as of uh, today is that uh, we have 7,850. These are to uh, augment our projections. Okay, the 7,850 is part of the 16,500 uh, uh, target. Okay po. Uh, just want to point out, no, si Senator Ivy is very active dito sa Bayanihan po and uh, she was part of the bicameral conference. We already ratified the measure. 13.5 uh, billion po yung nakapaloob doon sa DOH na kasama po doon, uh, included po doon yung hiring ng uh, HRA. I just hope na we, we take note of that para, again, uh, this is on top of the, uh, the, the, the budget that you will be getting for next year. So I hope ma 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 madagdagan pa yung uh, target nito. And again, I think yung bottom line dito is uh, una malinawan yung ating mga healthcare workers, pangalawa magkaroon ng kahit na na, na maliit o maayos na insentibo at uh, enticing naman para sa kanila ay uh, sila po ay uh, ma-hire dito sa ating uh, uh, ating uh, pangangailangan para sa ating mga health uh, health care workers. I I'll give the floor Mr. to Chair. Senator Binay. Sorry. Yes. Mr. Senator Chair, uh, siguro dadagdagan ko din itong usapin natin pagdating dito sa health workers. Pwede ho bang malaman either sa DOLE or sa OWA ilan pa ho ba yung mga health workers na apektado ah. ng bali? I think the OEA may 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 be able to give us uh, uh, the data. Yes, uh, Admin Olalia, your your this see this you're recognized, Admin. Olalia. Yes, Admin Bernard Olalia. Uh, can you do? Can you, sir? We still can't hear you, uh, Admin Olalia. <laughs> Parang nag-walk out na lang siya. <laughs> uh, is, there, is there anyone uh, here who can uh, uh, siguro, answer Senator Nancy's concern? Or, siguro, Mr. Chair, baka yung taga-DOH may data. Oh, ayan na si... Uh, Admin right. Olalia, yes, you're recognized. Opo, uh, opo, opo. Please yes, po. Y yun pong uh, nagre-request po sa amin na uh, nag-engage po sa amin through the Philippine uh, na Nurses Association po, 600 po yung affected po ng ba. 600 healthcare workers po, particularly nurses po sila. Good na lang. 600 na lang ho. So after ma-lift yung ba ng March 8, 600 na lang yung hindi pa makakaalis. Opo. Kasi uh, po, uh, we uh, implemented po yung uh, coverage ng exemptions. And because of the exemptions granted by IATF, nakapag-deploy po kami ng uh, more or less 300 every month since March of this year po. Ah, so tama ho ba yun? Na kahit may ban, may nakaalis pa rin after March? Yes po ma'am, kasi po meron pong exemptions, exemptions. sa uh, IATF uh, 64. Yung sa uh, latest uh, IATF resolution po, ang nakalagay po kasi doon ma'am, yung mga nurses na may perfected contracts as of March 8, 2020 will be allowed to be deployed. Yung pong mga balik manggagawa natin, these are the nurses that uh, went home for vacation and they are returning to the same job site and same employer po, they will be allowed to be deployed. Yun pong ating mga government hires which are covered by bilateral labor agreements na meron pong kontrata prior to March 8, 2020 will also be processed and allowed to be deployed. And would you recommend to the IATF that to totally lift this ban? Uh, there is already a recommendation we made po when we uh, had an engagement with all the uh, sectors in the industry of the HCW, ma'am. No? And uh, according to the report of the DOLE, Ang, uh, ang uh, recommendation po ng DOLE is to uh, recommend yung lifting of the ban with respect to the 600 ACWs po 
na na ni-request po ng PNA or yung Philippine Nurses Association. Oh, so at least uh, chair, medyo good news to para sa ating mga health workers na ready to go na abroad na uh, kahit pa paano meron pa lang uh, move ngayon na i-lift na itong ban for health workers. Do we have a timeline, Admin Olalia, kung kailan may implement ito? Because this is still a proposal, right? And we have been uh, asking this uh, for quite some time. Do we have a timeline? Sir, the decision to, to completely lift yung pong temporary suspension po is up to the IATF po, sir. So, um, okay. uh, po, it's up to the IATF now. The ball is in the court, sir. Okay, we will okay. continue to follow it up with IATF uh, together with my uh, colleagues here. Sige, please, okay, uh, thank, you. Nancy, thank you, Mr. Please. Chair. Siguro, uh, Mr. Chair, can we just get an update dun sa mga uh, repatriated OFWs natin? Isa kasi dun sa final natin na resolution, eh, itong uh, uh, yung mga quarantine facilities for our OFW. Siguro, uh, update lang ko ano na yung status Kasi di ba natatanda natin a few months back, uh, marami nagre-reklama tayong mga OFW na parang isang buwan na silang nasa quarantine facilities. Hanggang ngayon ba may ganitong problema pa rin ang ating mga OFW? Yes, yes. ako na po. Sasagot, Chair. Uh, okay lang po. Admin Hans, uh, you have the floor but we'll ask also the OH about this uh, issue. Uh, Admin Hans, please proceed. Thank you. Opo, uh, meron po tayong proseso na na nakalatag o, mula sa IATF National Task Force uh, kina General Charlie at uh, meron din tayo mga government agencies na may assigned responsibilities dun sa proseso na yun. Uh, so, uh, unang-una, yung uh, pagdating sa airport, yung swab testing nila uh, done by the PCG Coast Guard and then the results are processed by the Philippine Red Cross. And then, uh, as soon as they Li get swapped... Admin Hans, libre yan, ha? Libre ang libre. swabbing, so, libre. Libre. Uh, libre. Uh, courtesy of the PhilHealth. Okay. Uh, meron silang contract with the, with the Red Cross. And then, yung pong uh, swabbing, after swabbing, they are... Uh, well, there's a briefing, and then they're brought to, to the to the OA counter at the airport arrival lobby and matched with their respective hotel quarantine facilities, assuming they are asymptomatic, no, pasado sa thermal scanning and such. So, yung pong mga naidadala natin, uh, sa ngayon, now, it stands at around 3,000. We have around 3,000 in our OA hotel quarantine facilities uh, uh, spread over mga 60, 65 hotels. And, and ito pong... Uh, mga hotel quarantine facilities are DOT accredited. Kapag meron pong nag-positive doon sa labas ng resulta, sila po ay kinukuha ng Bureau of Quarantine na dinadala to a COVID-positive facility, which is a combination of a government-run uh, facility such as Field Sports, Ninoy Aquino, New Clark City, or uh, an, an OWA sponsored uh, COVID positive hotel facility. May mga hotels naman din na pumapayag. Mga apat po yan sila na OWA hotels uh, na COVID positive. But it's sponsored by OWA but it's run by uh, the Bureau of Quarantine. Uh, and of course, OFWs po ang lahat ng laman ng OWA quarantine COVID facility na yun. Uh, Doon sa mga nagne-negative, uh, sila po ay dinadaling resulta. Uh, sila po ay dinadala sa either Philippine Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange for land travel, land transport for the Luzon OFWs including NCR. And then pag Visayas, Mindanao, sila po ay transported via NAIA 2, Terminal 2, uh, every day. Merong mga chartered buses and chartered flights that leave NAIA and bring OFWs to Visayas and Mindanao. And as, as mentioned, 165,000 na po ang uh, napa through this process. Uh, I, might, I might care to add that uh, there is a small percentage na sinusundo yung mga Luzon OFWs na uh, sinusundo ng either LGUs. May mga programa rin po yung LGUs doon na dito, patungkol dito yung sundo nila, lalo na yung mga taga-NCR na LGUs. And then meron din sinusundo ng mga relatives. So there's a small percentage na hindi kailangan i o i but sinusundo ng LGUs or ng relatives nila. 
Uh, and then um, once they are transported, uh, they go to their respective LGUs and uh, go through uh, medical protocols there. Iba-iba po ang, ang medical protocols ng LGUs. Uh, a quick scan of uh, uh, LGUs, for instance, will tell us na may mga LGUs that adhere to home quarantine, uh, basta't monitor lang. Example there is Baguio City kay General Magalong. Uh, maganda yung kanyang tracer system. So, napapauwi niya uh, dahil nga positive, uh, negative PCR and uh, asymptomatic yung mga nauwi. But meron mga LGUs na dinadaan pa sa swab test, dinadaan pa sa hotel quarantine facility. Ito medyo uh, masalimuot ng konti para sa amin kasi in some LGUs, sinasagot pa rin huli ng OWA yung kanilang pag-hotel doon. And uh, uh, just to support the OFWs or else they will be lodged somewhere else. So, yun po, uh, merong uh, sariling medical protocols yung mga nanunumbalik po doon. Uh, maybe the last point is... Oh. If I may, no, just, just, just one uh, quick uh, interjection. You mentioned a lot of uh, data kanina, especially doon sa mga repatriated uh, uh, OFWs natin and uh, some of them are, uh, act, uh, are, are active. Uh, confirmed COVID-19 cases. Do you do you uh, uh, coordinate with the DOH uh, with regard yes. to this uh, uh, data? Yes, yes, uh, Senia. In fact, the data will come from the BOQ. Uh, I don't have the hard data right now, but okay. I know they, they, they're about 2,000. Uh, I, I can't, I can't so say again, may, may, okay. may we ask the Department of Health? Si, uh, nandiyan kanina si... Uh, uh, Asek Ronquillo tsaka si uh, Dr. Benaventura may, may, may we ask uh, just one question uh, I can see you I can I can are you there? Yeah. Yes sir for me I uh, may defer to uh, Dr. Carlos De La Reina who's also attending he's from the Bureau of Quarantine okay. Dr. Carlos De La Reina po Dr. Carlos are you around? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Chair. Good, good afternoon. Just one question, just one question sir. Uh, kanina ang daming binanggit ni Admin Hans. May we know from the OH how many repatriated uh, uh, overseas Filipinos are active uh, confirmed COVID-19 case? Uh, right now, sir, we have uh, for the total as of May 3 ang, uh, up to August 24, Meron po tayong total of 6,007. I'm uh, only talking about the active, sir, positive. active cases. Active cases. Because yesterday, sir, I got a data coming from DOH as of August 24. Ang active uh, COVID case uh, repatriates who have not yet uh, recovered is 2,200. Ayan po yung nakuha namin. I just want a confirmation kung uh, totoo po yan. Ito yung total uh, ano po, total namin. Ito. Apa. 2,200 po yung uh, um, repatriates who have not recovered yet. Tama po yung data na yan? Yan po yung binigay sa amin ng DOH. Is that correct? Would you confirm this uh, data? So if I may, if I may, sir, uh, chair, as of today, sir, ang data po namin, meron po kaming uh, total admitted po sa aming PTMF sa mga treat COVID centers po namin na uh, 830. Mm. Okay, 830 ang admitted ngayon. You know, I asked this question and I think uh, DOA should do something with your records and data. No? We have been uh, patiently asking for all these uh, figures. Uh, ito nga, na nakuha namin 2,200. And nakakabahala po kasi ang nakalagay po dito sa data rin, 137 lang ang admitted in hospitals. So, ibig sabihin dun sa active cases, eh wala pa hong uh, one-fourth yung admitted. 
sa mga hospitals. So this is the reason why uh, we are raising this kasi, ano kasi yung mga, hirap sabihin na so is the values na mga nasa automatic kaya ilan lang naman sa hospital siya. Kakapiyangot lang pala yung admitted sa sa hospital. So to so, clarify right now hospital. Siguro, right now how many active cases ng COVID yung pong ating mga repatriated OFWs, ilan po sila at ilan po yung naka-admit? Admitted ko pa ba ngayon? Ito admitted mo lahat siya. Ito sila active na sa TTLN siya mga yan. Tapos hanggang dito. Pero yung mga hospitals, wala na halos na sa hospitals kasi. Sir, can we, uh, can yes, we sir. hear from you, sir? Yes, uh, sir, sa ngayon po, sir, yung nabanggit ko pong 830 kanina, sila po yung admitted sa mga TTMFs po natin, okay. uh, 830. Okay, admitted, how many are active cases? How many active cases? So, 830, yeah. ano yung denominator natin? Oh my God. Yung nabanggit ko ni... Uh, yung nabanggit po sir, tama po itong 137, ito po yung mga nasa hospitals po. Bale yung 830, sila po yung uh, total OFWs po. Sila po yung mga total OFWs na na-extract na po namin. Yung, yung 137, sila po yung nagiging moderate to severe po na sila po yung nandun sa mga hospitals po ngayon. Sir, ibig sabihin out of the hand 830 active cases, 137 ang admitted right now. That's 4%, sir. 4% of the total uh, OFWs na nagkaroon ng uh, COVID, no? Active, act, active cases po ito. So, kung sasabihin natin, inaalagaan natin sila, medyo nakakabahala po ito. And this is quite different from the figures that I'm hearing from admin hands. Kaya ho nalilito kami. Sana... Uh, Ayusin natin itong uh, data na ito. Sige po, uh, Senator yes, Nancy. Um, Siguro may balikan, Mr. Chair. Please, uh, Senator yes. Nancy. Mr. Chair, balikan ko lang si Admin Hans. Um, a few months back, nakita din natin sa Manila Bay na marami tayong mga cruise ships na nakadaong doon. Hanggang ngayon ba, uh, nandun pa rin sila? Or, kasi I remember dun sa isang hearing natin na banggit nyo, Dahil mag-change crew, kaya hindi pa sila makaalis. Hanggang ngayon, uh, ba ganun pa rin yung sitwasyon? Wala na, vastly reduced na sen. Uh, uh, as, as far as I know, they, they, uh, there would, they could be numbering uh, less than 500 uh, at this stage. Uh, nabawasan na ho ng gusto uh, yung, yung mga nando doon sa Manila Bay. In fact, marami na hong barko na nakaalis na sa Manila Bay. Kaya hindi na natin natatanaw sila uh, from, from afar. Uh, uh, send, uh, Chair, if I may venture to respond to the query on the on the matter on confinement. Uh, of course, uh, I'm not the prime authority. Active cases. Yes, yes, but yes but please, I, uh, Admin Hans. But, I, yeah, I, but, I, but I, before I, you I, say something, Admin Hans, sorry, before you say something, Admin Hans, yung 4% na sinasabi natin ng 137, ang universe natin, ang denominator natin, yung binigay din sa atin ng DOH, na 2,200. So one, out of the 2,200 active cases, 137 lang ang admitted. So that's Apo. just 4%. So medyo nakakalito po. And this Apo. came from DOH itself. no? So let's let's hear from you, Admin Hans. Thank you. Apo, uh, the, um, mine is uh, uh, the the uh, BOQ partner answer, uh, not the BOQ itself. But sa pagkakaalam ko, sa mga meetings namin, sa dinami ng meetings namin with the BOQ, uh, yung... Yung sagot po dyan is a key also to the to to the to the non-discrimination of OFWs who are who arrive, no? Especially those na nagiging COVID positive. Kasi ang explanation po is many who are COVID positive are asymptomatic. And being asymptomatic, they don't need confinement. Uh, ang ang rule po, there is a standing DOH memorandum circular which says they are confined to a hotel COVID positive facility like the one I mentioned. And after 14 days, if they stay as asymptomatic, they are deemed recovered. Uh, and, and, and for this reason, there's a BOQ certification issued and they are transported home. 
Uh, so that, even that if you're be... active, if you're positive, uh, Advinas, if you're positive and asymptomatic, you can go home. Hindi ka po ba dapat uh, ma-quarantine? No, no, after quarantine, sen. After the after, after a fourteen day quarantine. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. The figures that I was uh, sharing kanina active po sila. Uh, naka quarantine at uh, uh, again uh, one only one thirty seven were admitted. Opo, opo. After a fourteen day quarantine period and they stay asymptomatic, then the corresponding uh, deemed recovered certificate is issued by the BOQ. But I defer to the BOQ, sen. I defer to the. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Admin Hans. Uh, Senator Nancy or Senator yes. Marcos? Then, Mr. Yes. Chair, siguro, last ano na lang, pupuntahan ko lang yung uh, Magna Carta for our seafarers. Um, kasi itong mga na-file na bills for the Magna Carta was done before uh, COVID. At alam naman natin, nagbago ang uh, ang mundo dahil dito sa COVID. May nakikita ba silang uh, pwedeng idagdag uh, na provision sa um kumaga na 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 pwedeng sagot dun sa experience natin dito sa COVID. Um anybody from the uh, stakeholders from the maritime industry baka si Attorney Dennis can answer. Baka may mga learning from COVID na pwedeng idagdag para ma-enhance itong Magna Carta. Uh, Sen, thank you for acknowledging me. May, maybe I'll just read our statement to support na lang sa Magna Carta. Uh, basically, uh, the Magna Carta should be uh, the translation to reality of the wisdom popularized by the late President Magsaysay. Yung sinasabi natin, he who has less in life should have more in law. Uh, mga OFW natin ay lagi tinitingnan ng mga heroes natin sa mga remittances nila in billions of dollars they earn. Pero, ang job ho ng seafarer natin is not exactly a walk in the park. Tulad ngayon, marami tayong nagiging biktima, nagiging nagsasuffer ng, sa pandemic na to, At marami pa rin talaga sa ating mga seafarers ay nagiging subject pa rin discrimination, abuse, maltreatment, and unfair labor practice worldwide. Lalo na ho ngayon, uh, kahit to may pandemic yan, hindi pa rin ho naiiwasan to. Siguro isa ho to sa mga issues na pwede na tingnan. Yung nangyari sa discrimination na to dahil dun sa kanilang pagbabalik dito at ng ating mga seafarers. Uh, ang maritime workplace po natin ay lagi naman na-identify to na isang high-risk workplace. Yun nga, mayroon tayong pandemic, yung, yung COVID-19 na to. At ang industry po natin ay lagi po itong nakikita na marami pa rin health and safety hazards that increase our seafarers' risk of accidents, illness, and mortality. Um, siguro sa tingin po natin, ang proponents ng Magna Carta nito ni re recognize na ang sea-based workers ay merong ibang circumstances na different from the mainstream or land-based OFW uh, sa ating labor force. Uh, yung current bag na karta natin should be primarily designed for the protection of seafarers natin against those who may violate their rights even during the time pandemic, including those in power such as ship owners, mining agencies, medical institutions, and the like who have the capacity to use their resources in the downplaying their internationally recognized rights of the seafarers. Ang legislative bodies ho natin are called upon to be vigilant in their time on their duty to protect labor, lalo na sa ganitong pandemic. Uh, kapag in-apply ho natin sa mga Filipino seafarers, yung perilous nature na kilang trabaho ay dapat ikusintera in determining the rights na dapat protectan under sa ating mga Magna Carta. Ang Magna Carta ho natin, uh, ang aming hukong grupo, ang National Service Day, ay sinusuporta ho namin ang Senate Bill Number 135, ni Senator Angara, ang Senate Bill 357 ni Senator Jontiveros, ang Senate Bill 300 ni Senator Revilla, ang Senate Bill 937 ni Senator Po, at ang Senate Bill 1369 ni Senator Binay. Yes, yun lang, uh, yun lang Mr. You. Chair. Thank, thank you. you. At uh, meron din po kaming bill doon, ah, yung uh, Senate Bill number 1745. <laughs> Anyway, let's give the floor to uh, Senator Ivy Marcos. Uh, Madam, you're recognized. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chair Joel. Um, gusto ko nang sabihin, for the record, na dati natin, noong 1974 pa, may National Seamen Board, baka naaalala ni Dr. Oka yun, kasi si Kapitan Oka ang pasimuno nun. And uh, ito ay uh, na-fold into po POEA noong 1982 lamang. So karapat-dapat lamang, tulad nga ng sinabi ng uh, JMJ kanina, 
na hiwalit din yung uh, seamen o seafarers kasi talaga na iiba ang sitwasyon nila sa mga land-based and that's uh, very, very important that they have their own one-stop shop. Ang kitang-kitang ko lamang, eh anong magiging posisyon at uh, uh, relasyon niya doon sa POEA nga, ngayon? Magiging uh, subset ba siya ng POEA? Ganun ba yung uh, iniisip natin, Joel, at uh, natin kung sino man? Isa sa ilalim ba yung uh, bagong National Seafarers Admin uh, sa ilalim ng POEA? Ganun ba yun? Sen Aimi, na, 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 napuputol. I'm sorry, what's your... Yes, um, my, my question was, nun dati kasi, meron na talagang National Seaman's Board. 1974 yon hanggang 1982, binuwag yon. Tapos itinatag yung POAEA na sinasakop ang land-based at yung sea-based. Eh para sa akin, karapat dapat lamang nahiwala yung uh, si si uh, fairers pagkat yung kanilang sitwasyon ay ibang-iba. Dito ba sa bill kasi hindi masyadong maliwanag eh talaga bang uh, yung National Seafarers Administration ay masasa ilalim sa POEA o hiwalay siya? Kasi iba yung mandato niya eh. So we can hear from uh, Dole ano yung uh, comments nila tungkol dito? Oo, kasi alam naman ng Dole ngayon, yan si Yusek Joji. Di ba pinagsasabihan na tayo na right sizing? Eh syempre ako yung dakilang Ilocana, kailangan magtipid. Kung magtatatag uh, na naman ng panibago, nako hindi na naman tayo bigyan ng budget, pahirap pa na naman to. Yusek, anong idea ninyo? Yes, Yusek Joji, please proceed. Mute po yung computer, ma'am. Thank Sir, you. Chairman, yes, we can hear you now. Okay, marami yung salamat. On the question of uh, the good senator, Ivy Marcos, if I remember correctly, the most recent uh, input or comment that we gave to this particular item is on the creation of a Department of Filipinos as uh, proposed by... Uh, I believe uh, Senator Bongo. Ah, uh, yung, yung at, Department of OFW. Opo, at, at, attaches the POEA and the OWA to the new proposed department. However, ang nakikita ko pong reform doon sa proposal na ito ay meron pong distinction between the sea-based and the land-based. Uh, so, ito yung sinasabi ma'am ninyo na NSA or a precursor to the uh, POEA during the 1974-1973 ay somehow reflected in this particular proposal that uh, uh, actually qualifies the two component, land-based and sea-based. Magkaiba po sila ng sektor. Pero, pero hiwalay ba ito sa POEA o isa sa ilalim sa POEA? Kasi baka magdoble-doble tayo at uh, alam naman ni Chair Joel, ni uh, Senator Risa, tuwing uh, magpo-propose ng bago, ang daming nagre-reklamo sa ating economic team. Ang distinction kong nakagay diyan, ma'am, uh, Senator Marcos, is according to the four proposed four undersecretaries. Meron nung silang undersecretary for sea-based workers and another undersecretary for land-based and there therefore dun sa struktura na pinopropose ay naka-attach po ang POEA. So in answer to your query, mukhang separate po ang other secretaries vis-a-vis -vis the POEA as a organ distinct organizational structure that is not subsumed but actually attached to the Department of Proposed Department of Finance. Just to put on record uh, uh, sec you sec Joji and the uh... Uh, Senator Aimee, no, to discuss uh, this week supposed to be the, uh, the, the the proposed measure. In fact, we have been meeting with a lot of uh, stakeholders, different departments, kasi oh, when Dole submitted its position, and dami pong mga, mga, mga comments and uh, uh, I remember uh, may mga ilan pa nga na, na, na 
uh, have strong reservations on this uh, 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 particular initiative. And uh, right now, we have had uh, the, the, the position paper of DFA and DOF, although some, 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 some uh, vague uh, areas no, na, na follow up po tayo. And then we also wrote DOLE uh, through Secretary Bellio para uh, isama na natin yung lahat ng executive departments if they can uh, uh, sit down and meet and uh, 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 talk about this uh, particular measure. We have yet to re receive anything from NEDA. And, ah, okay. Uh, Si Kabsek uh, Nograles uh, gave uh, the commitment that uh, he will get back to us uh, para magawa po ito. And once na maayos po yung lahat para at least yung buong executive department, ito yung position nila, we will be able to uh, hear it uh, as soon as possible. So just just to put that on record. Thank you, Senator Aimee. Please proceed. Ay, yes, I think uh, si Bernie Olalia yata nag-raise ng hand, Chair. Yes po, Mr. Chair. Salamat po. Uh, okay. Lali, yes po, oo. In reply to the query of uh, the good senator, no, uh, yung pong proposed bill po na Senate Bill 937, yung for the creation of a National Seafarers Administration, yung proposal po ng bill na kalagay po doon, it will be an attached agency of the Department of Labor and Employment. And because it is an attached agency of the Department of Labor and Employment, may sarili po siyang regulatory and supervisory powers over the seafaring industry. And presently po, uh, this will overlap on the functions and powers of the POEA. Yun na yun nga yung tinatanong ko kasi wala sa mandate ng POEA. Apo. Kaya pa paano yun na i-attach? Pero like uh, like our chair said, and as mentioned by Yusek Joji, talaga namang ino-overhaul ang OFW dahil uh, utos ni Presidente magkaroon ng bagong department. Ayaw nga lang ng ibang uh, official sa DOLE. Uh, alam na natin yon. Ayaw din umamin at ayaw din umamin, Sen Aimee. <laughs> Ganoon na, talaga na was. Uh, sa totoo lang, ako ayaw ako nang hiwalay na department kasi magasto sa, sa sweldo pa lang ng music e eh, patay kang bata ka eh. Kaya ninenerbius lagi pag uh, bagong department. Pero uh, pwede rin mag-administration, tignan natin. Dahil nga sa COVID, mas lalong walang budget. Uh, lilinawin ko rin lang, um, kanina sinabi ni DFA Force na wag si men tama nga naman kasi very gender bias tano di dapat si fairers tama naman yun so si fairers talaga ang karapat dapat na term medyo laus na talaga yung si men at um, isa pa ang itatanong ko rin kasi yung ating uh, gobyerno nitong covid parating tinutuko yung mga uh, nagtatrabaho sa cruise ship ang tawag nila service crew, paulit-ulit sinasabing service crew. Eh, palagay ko, the uh, cruise ship industry is the fastest growing um, area of the entire tourism sector. Kahit bagsak ngayon ang turismo, babalik at babalik yan. At nakita natin, yung mga cruise ship, nagsimula na naman. Na kahit pa paano, andyan na naman yan. Clearly, uh, the functions of uh, the service crew, so-called, are uh, distinctly uh, um, different from those of the uh, seafarers, as we traditionally understand it, um, given that uh, their work is completely different, no? yung above and uh, uh, below board, ika nga, sa ship yung uh, mga nagtatrabaho sa pagpapaandar ng barko versus yung service ng uh, cruise ship. Uh, ano sa palagay ninyo? Anong magandang uh, distinction dyan? O dapat ba i-distinguish dyan? Kasi sa isang barko, lahat ng uli, uri ng trabaho, pinasuka ng Pilipino. Kailangan ba may sektor ng service crew o definition sa kanila? O basta lahat sila seafarers, bahala na? Anybody can reply. Wala, naisip ko lang kasi tuwing binabasa ko service crew ang dating eh. Yes, anyone uh, in particular who wanted to... Uh, yes, uh, Amusu President uh, Oka. Po, kasi po ayon po sa Maritime Labor Convention, lahat po na nakasakay sa Orobar po, nagkatrabaho, considered a seafarer po. So, yun po ang definition. Uh, Salamat po, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, President Oka. You. At uh, yun sana ang sasabihin ko na sa definition siguro i-expand na natin at i-adapt na natin yung international maritime. Kasi sa mga definition ng ating uh, existing bills, ito mga bills na kinakakarap yes. natin, eh wala yun eh. Wala yung service crew. So, sasabihin ko lang sana, dagdag natin yung service crew at uh, talagang bahagi naman sila ng seafarers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other uh, uh, points you would like to raise, uh, Senator? Uh, okay, uh, we have JMG, uh, 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 President. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, you're recognized, sir. Yes. Uh, comment lang po tungkol sa cruise industry. Uh, matagal na pong uh, uh, hindi po pinag-aaralan, pinag-uusapan po na ang uh, magkameron po ng separate uh, uh, contract uh, 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 template ang mga taga cruise uh, industry no at uh, magkameron po na iba iba pong uh, mga regulasyon because uh, while they are considered seafarers uh, medyo iba din po nga ang kanilang uh, trabaho sa barko so uh, we are looking forward to the day na Matapos na nga po sa usapan sa PUA na magkameron po ng separate rules and regulations for ano for cruise vessels at saka kontrata po nila. Thank you, Thank you sir. Um siguro if there's there's none na uh, Senator Risa, are you raising your hand? Uh, anyway, uh I, I have another question for 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 Dole, you know, we have been uh talking about the uh the ayudas and all itong bayanihan one and two and i think it's important to talk about this uh, comprehensive uh, uh, labor uh, recovery package last june we were uh, informed by dole that uh, they need a total uh, if i if i recall it right parang 40 billion to implement a uh, comprehensive labor recovery package that would uh, benefit 3.2 million uh, workers. I remember Segbelio uh, talking about it across various sectors. No, um, However, uh, alam nyo, dun sa bayanihan uh, to, lahat kami sa Senado, especially Senator Aimee, Senator Nancy, Senator Risa, alam, lahat kami, uh, bitin na bitin kami at uh, parang lahat kami, hindi kami makapaniwala na yung 140, 160 billion na ceiling na binibigay sa amin ay kakasya. No? Um, in fact, in Bayanihan 2 bill, only, uh, we, only, we were only able to uh, provide a fraction of uh, this request with 13 billion pesos allotted for uh, cash for work programs such as TUPAD, itong CAMP, itong ACAP, etc. And for involuntary separation assistance for displaced uh, workers including OFWs. Uh, we got another uh, 3 billion pesos for uh, workers in the tourism industry. And uh, ayan po yung uh, pina-flash sa screen, no? Ang, ang, ang point ko lang, uh, uh, Yusek Joji, uh, Aragon, yung hinihiling po ninyo 40 billion, 13 billion lang yung uh, makaya natin dito sa bayan niyo. But of course, there's another uh, set of budget na, na for 2021. Uh, may we know if this is enough uh, to reach yung uh, comprehensive uh, uh, labor recovery uh, package? And uh, based on your assessment, uh, how much additional uh, fund is needed to implement a, uh, let's be realistic, itong comprehensive uh, labor recovery package? Marami pong salamat, Chairman. Can you hear me, sir? Proceed. Okay. Marami pong salamat. Unang-una, Allow me to express the gratitude of Secretary Silvestre Elio to the members of this August Chamber. Uh, we, we know that the fund for Bayanihan 2 is a bit constrained. 140 plus a standby fund of two, some 25 billion. Pero nabigyan niyo po kami ng puwang, sir, for a 13 plus 3. Papasalamat ho kami. Now, we also recognize the fact that we submitted to you earlier a 40 billion package for uh, cash assistance plus uh, wage subsidy program. What we really wanted to do was to start from the countryside. 
although we know that this is a short-term assistance and a palliative, so to speak, or stopgap measure, but what we intend to do is to start from the countryside and spur and spur employment through these stopgap measures. So, kumbaga, ang tawag ho namin doon sa recovery plan sana namin was a barangay emergency assistance program. However, now that we are in Bayanihan 2 and we look forward to the uh, possible enactment of this uh, bill, sir, kami ho ang gusto namin ho sabihin sa inyo, aside from the pasasalamat, is we will custom customize and based on a prioritization plan, Mr. Chairman, a prioritization plan that will only include both for the formal and the informal sector workers, kung ano ho ang pinaka nangangailangan, ay yun ho ang aayutahan namin given the 13 billion. Kasi yung 13, uh, yung three naman ho spoken for, and these are for the... Critical. For tourism sector, yes. Tourism. So, ito ho yung CAP Camp, yung Tupad, at saka yung ACAP. So, si Secretary Bello ho ay inutusan na kami na gumawa ng isang balangkas o isang outline based on what uh, we have in, the, in our database and for the new applicants for these three major programs. Andito na ho sa amin and we will submit to you, Mr. Chairman, and to the other members of the committee, our plan to include the 13 plus 3, sir. So that would not only optimize or maximize our plan for the uh, displaced and affected workers in all the three sectors, Pero yun nga ho, based on our priority list, prioritization list and also uh, the, the reforms that we have discussed with, uh, particularly with Senator Amy Marcos, nagpapasalamat din kami on the better profiling, an, an improved database, and a better collaboration with the private sector for better gar targeting, Mr. Chairman. Ay ginagawa ho at... Uh, in, in no, may ano Bakit nilabas? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Magsasabit ho kami at as soon as possible time. Siguro ho this week, sir. Sige, thank you. Thank you, Yusek uh, Joji. No? Ang uh, bottom line dito, kung maikli ang kumot, matutong mamaluktot. No? And uh, it's good that you made mention about uh, prioritization plan. But it's also clear to me and clear to all of us na kulang po ito. In fact, uh, if you look at the data, the latest uh, labor force survey, 7.3 million Filipinos yung uh, nilagay dito as of uh, April 2020. Uh, meanwhile, based on a survey conducted by SWS, yung adult joblessness in the Philippines increased to 45%, no? which is a, a survey naman. No? Uh, this was uh, in uh, July of 2020. Uh, equivalent na is 27.3 million unemployed Filipinos. Of course, this is higher than the uh, PSA uh, survey and DOLE and DOF uh, estimates. So, pag tinignan natin yung uh, data na yan, uh, can we flash itong data ng uh, unemployment? Uh, mahalaga na makapaghanda po tayo. No? Itong estimated additional unemployment uh, as of April ng DOLE is 2.6 million. Uh, uh, ang estimate ng uh, NEDA at uh, DOF is about 2.6 uh, 2 million, and then you have total unemployed Filipinas as of April po, 5 million yung sa, sa Dole, and uh, 4.6 million yung sa NEDA, and yung sa PSA is about 7.3 million. So, ang, ang, ang point ko lang, uh, Yusek Joji, we really need to, to come up with the comprehensive uh, labor recovery package, and I'm glad that uh, before, Secretary Bello made mention about this, and we, we want you to to know that uh, um, marami ko kayong kakampi dito with uh, age na nakikita is uh, about 130 uh, uh, billion no? uh, uh, labor recovery package. I know it's a um, quite a lot at uh, yung uh, uh, DBM mag mag, mag, uh, mag very aksigurado rito uh, pag nakita nila. But this is based on our uh, estimates and uh, we have all the data to uh, to uh, uh, support 
these uh, uh, items and programs that we feel uh, would be needed in order to, to come up with the comprehensive labor recovery package. But we will, we will uh, closely uh, coordinate with DOLE, of course, the uh, we'd like to, to get your inputs about this and uh, siguro pagsamahin natin yung ating mga data para masiguro natin na ready rin po tayo uh, para dito sa ating uh, comprehensive labor recovery package. Salamat, uh, Yusek Joji, if you want to add some more. Sir, may I respectfully add something very short? Please, Let please. Po kami last week ng NEDA, PSA, Philippine Statistics Authority at ang DOLE. What we wanted to do was to harmonize and synchronize our data. Kasi hindi naman mo ito naglalaban-laban. And we really came up with a very uh, productive meeting. In, in fact, it was under the auspices of the PCOO that we met. So ang napagkasunduan ho talaga, since the PSA is the official source of uh, labor employment and employment data, then we will uh, defer to them for this kind of data. Kami naman po ay establishment reports or yung mga nare-receive ho namin on a daily basis. Kung ano ho yung mga administrative data namin, ayun ho ang ibibigay namin. But at the end of the day, meron na ho kaming Viber group. It's actually a quick reaction group that would allow us to uh, synchronize and reconcile our data, Mr. Secretary. I think it's a very good news that the three of us are speaking to one another. Salamat po. So you're raising your hand, Senator Aimee, your recognition. Yeah. Mr. Chair, itatanong ko lang kasi sa dole, uh, hirap na hirap tayo dun sa SAP pagkat yung uh, informal sector talaga, wala talagang listahan na maayos yung informal sector. So isasuggest ko lamang na hanggat maari, total naka-earmark na yung para sa tourism. Kung uh, pwedeng kunin ng datos per sector, per industry ng uh, dole, kasi talaga mahihilo tayo at ang aasahan na lamang natin, eh tanging mga politiko mula mayor hanggang barangay. Siguro yung ating um, uh, liaising, coordinating, exchange of data, eh, gawin natin sa mga industry uh, associations. Eh, halimbawa, yung sa creative, maliwanag naman may Mowell Fund, may FDCP, NCCA, and HCP. Maliwanag naman yung tropang ganon. Tapos uh, yung grupo, yung iba't ibang grupo, doon kaya tayo kumuha. Kasi ang labo-labo ng datos talaga natin sa informal. Informal nga kasi. At uh, maari siguro that will be the first step kapag na-profile, na-database ng maayos, um, magkakaroon na tayo ng somehow uh, increased formal sector. Maingganyo na natin sila na magrehistro. At uh, konting comment lang, Mr. Chair uh, at uh, kina Senator Risa, hindi ba napakahina naman ng dole humingi ng pera? Andito na nga, kami na nagtatanong, magkano ba kailangan ninyo? Wala naman sa inyong sumasagot. Apakahina ah, naman ninyo. Parating na yung budget para sa 2021. Ratsyada na. <laughs> Ang dami yung champion dito sa Senate. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Ivy. Senator Risa, you wanted to say something uh, before we wrap up? Uh. Um, siguro, Chair, aside from thanking the Chair and the colleagues at lahat po ng resource persons, just to follow up kung na, napahayag na ni Attorney Dennis yung kanilang statement of support sa committee, Mr. Chair. Uh, but if he wants to... Uh, nakapagsalita po siya kanina. May, may we know if uh, may gusto pa siya idagdag? Uh, Attorney Dennis? Um, okay na ho, uh, Senator. We just want to reiterate our support for the Magna Carta and we hope that it will truly reflect uh, the visions and and the uh, hopes of our Filipino seafarers despite the fact na meron tayong pandemic ngayon. Salamat, Attorney Dennis. Maraming salamat, Mr. Chair. And Attorney Dennis, we will uh, invite you for the TWG. No, I think uh, it's 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 good that we were able to uh, talk about all these uh, uh, inputs that uh, were given to us today, and uh, we will close uh, the, the 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 hearing on that particular uh, issue, and uh, we will invite you for the TWG, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. It's an honor.
Mr. Chair, may nakikita akong isa pang baka nagbo-volunteer sa TWGs. I, I see po si yes, I think uh, si, uh, Ms. Ellen at Chair. Sana. Yes, ma'am, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, we'd like to manifest our uh, interest and desire to be part of the TWG for six years. So that's one. And yes. I, okay, thank you, Chair. So the second point is, Kung tayo po ay dadako na doon sa inyong uh, resolutions 384, meron din po kami idadagdag na input pag nandun na pa kayo. Uh, uh, please, you may say so. And uh, uh, ah, okay. also, again, uh, let me uh, remind everyone that uh, feel you, are, you are encouraged actually to give us your position paper. And uh, kahit naman hindi niyo humasabi dito sa hearing, just, just submit your uh, position paper and uh, we will definitely consider it. Thank you. Ma'am. So, Chair, if I may, doon sa inyong uh, Senate resolution on uh, adequate on-site assistance, pwede na po ba akong mag- Sige po, you may do so. All, uh -huh. Although may, we are wrapping up uh, right may now. May clean na lang po, Chair. Uh -huh. You may do so if you so desire. Yeah. yeah. So, just, uh, this is uh, specifically for our Dole. Uh, we're in touch with Sec Bellio, pero baka po, I'll use this occasion para i-reiterate Yun po kasi, uh, especially at this time of the COVID pandemic, wala pa po tayo talagang uh, full-time na labat sa Kuwait. Kaya po si yung ating polo sa Riyadh, siya rin po yung polo sa Kuwait. Ay pareho po yung hardship po, so uh, sana may ma-appoint ma na na polo sa Kuwait na hindi na si labat nasa. Kasi nagsishuttle siya from Riyadh to Kuwait. Yun po yung isa. Ang pangalawa po, uh, wala rin po tayong Labat designate sa Kubar kasi umuwi na po si Labat Conferido. And again, uh, marami po tayong OFW sa Eastern Province ng Saudi. Dole uh, Sec Bello said na mag-appoint uh, na po sila din sa dalawang post. But I'd like to probably hear from uh, Asik Georgie kung ano na po yung update doon. Kasi ito yung mga post na marami tayong OFWs in distress. Opo po. Magandang hapon, ma'am. <coughs> ma'am ma Ellen, Georgie. magandang hapon. Ito hong sa Kuwait at saka sa Alcobar, ma'am, for a full at time attache and a, uh, an attache designate. Ite take up ko po immediately pagdating ni Secretary, hopefully today, sa paggaling sa Davao. But uh, let me assure you that as of yesterday, the, the list of uh, applicants is uh, is actually being discussed with the uh, HRD person and under secretary Claro Arellano who's in charge of the international uh program or cluster so ma'am gagalaw kami ng mabilis dito at alam ko hong yung mga OFW dito sa Kuwait at sa Alcobar eh maraming dapat ding intindihin so uh, uh, allow me to assure you ma'am thank you Sen, Chair. Chair, quick, quick, res admin hands. Opa, quick response lang doon kay Ms. Ellen. Uh, doon sa Cobar, meron ng na designate si SEC and he is currently going through the the, the formalities, the, the diplomatic formalities po. So meron na po. Sa Alcobar. Thank you. Any other uh, Senator Risa, Senator Aimi, before we give our closing statement? Okay na kay Senator Aimi. Senator Risa? Senator Risa, you're, you're, you're in mute uh, mode. Do you want to no, say Mr. something? Chair, I'm just listening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Because we're, we're going to wrap up. Is it okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Uh, Chair. Salamat po. Well, again, thank you so much uh, for 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 uh, your time, especially our uh, distinguished colleagues, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Risa Ontivero, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Nancy Binay, and all our uh, resource persons. Napakarami po nating uh, napag-usapan ngayong araw na ito patungkol sa sitwasyon ng ating mga overseas Filipino workers mula po sa pag-abot ng uh, assistance pagsasaayos ng repatriation at paggawa ng malinaw na reintegration plan, particularly doon po sa ating mga seafarers at uh, these so-called prisoners. Um, ilan po sa mga uh, napakaraming insights na narinig natin ngayong araw, just to give uh, some highlights, aabot na po sa, 
sa 400,000 ang na-displaced na OFWs dahil sa COVID-19 at higit 150,000 na uh, ang na-repatriate. We also hope that uh, the relevant agencies continue to expand their loan assist to OFWs. Sa palagay po natin, uh, maliit ang 50,000 na uh, binanggit ni uh, Senator Aimee to cover assistance for the family left behind by the OFWs for three months. At uh, I think uh, there was a commitment uh, na binanggit ni Admin has that uh, he will uh, bring this up uh, sa board. Uh, upang magkaroon naman ng isang uh, tunay na labor uh, recovery and reintegration package para sa kanila, kailangan po natin ng malinaw at komprehensibong profiling of uh, repatriated OFWs. Ang uh, hiling po natin ay talagang makumpleto ito agad ng uh, dole sa lalong madaling panahon at uh, uh, maging efficient po tayo kasi kung mayroong database tayo na ganito, mas magiging e efficient po tayo. And I repeat, we are in a uh, 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 emergency situation and it requires an emergency response. Um, ngunit ayaw natin, siyempre, noong tinatawag na one-size-fits-all na polisiya dahil iba't iba po ang kakayahan at eksperyensya ng ating uh, mga OFWs. In line with this, we hope that the N NRCO can utilize their budget for its programs for undocumented OFWs. We reiterate our uh, finding kanina that none of its 29.8 million funds for 2020 have been disbursed. At uh, we monitor po natin yan no, kung anong uh, uh, magiging hakbang ng ating uh, ahensya na ito. Patungkol naman po dun sa Magna Carta for uh, seafarers, uh, we need to ensure that we introduce policies that will make our uh, Filipino seafarers sought after. Uh, we need a Magna Carta of uh, seafarers to protect the rights of uh, 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 our seafarers. Um, patungkol naman po doon sa uh, ating mga uh, nurses and uh, healthcare workers na narito pa rin at uh, na-stranded. I hope that the Department of Health can enlighten us uh, on the rationale of uh, retaining the ban on the overseas deployment of our healthcare workers. Buti na lang na nabanggit kanina ni uh, Admin Olalia na it may recommendation na sila para i-lift po ito. Kasi ho, ang estimated na kailangan uh, uh, na nurses at doctors kanina, binanggit ng DOH, 16,500, ngunit 7,850 pa lamang ang nakahire. Again, we need to uh, provide them uh, clear and fair incentives for them to be hired. At uh, klaro po yun. And we will continue to follow it up with IATF regarding the final decision again on... Uh, lifting the said ban. Sa datos naman po ng uh, DOH, um, uh, again, yung 137 lamang mula sa 2,200 active COVID-19 repatriates are either admitted or are in uh, quarantine uh, facilities. Gusto nating uh, mabigyan linaw po ang response ng DOH tungkol dito at uh, patuloy po nakasama sa ating uh, panawagan yung expansion ng ating mga quarantine and uh, uh, treatment facilities para sa repatriated OFWs. If you would recall, during the uh, hearing doon po sa PhilHealth, binanggit din po natin, 48% noong mga namatay sa COVID, uh, uh, na COVID patients, 48% ay hindi man lamang na-admit sa hospital. Ayaw na ayaw po natin mangyari ito sa ating mga uh, bagong bayani sa ating mga OFWs. Again, we salute, salute our uh, OFWs our overseas Filipino workers, they are the greatest testament of our work ethic and values as Filipinos. Kulang po tayo sa listo at liksi para agad matugunan ang pangangailangan ng ating mga manggagawa. Kaya kailangan uh, more pa. Kailangan po natin na uh, bilisan pa ang kilos para mas marami ang uh, matulungan na kababayan natin sa tulong ng isang comprehensive reintegration plan. To show that we have a... Ayan, nagpapat naman tayo sa ating uh, mga kulis dito sa Senado na kasama natin ngayon, Senator Risa, Senator Aimee, Senator Nancy, at Senator Bato. Tayo na lang po sa gobyerno ang uh, takbuhan kasi ng ating mga kababayan, ng ating mga OFWs. We cannot fail them and we should not fail them at all. We need to get our acts together. Sa inyo pong lahat muli, mapagpalang uh, tanghali at uh, maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pag-attend ng ating uh, Committee on Labor and Human Resources Development.
Muli, maraming salamat. And uh, this uh, committee uh, hearing is hereby uh, uh, terminated and uh, we are we will schedule uh, as soon as possible a technical working group uh, to uh, to uh, finalize our uh, committee report. Muli, maraming salamat po sa inyo. This uh, meeting hearing is hereby adjourned. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Thank you.